Oh my god, I'm dying at how goofy I look. That's so funny. What is going on here with Jeff? I don't know. He was connected and now he's not. Uh... <sighs> the hell does that say? Uh, is he holding us up? Give him a second here. See what's going on. Well, I see why he's no longer on. He thinks I'm going to come down there and kill him because he sent me an insult on Facebook. Yeah, I don't. That's it. You're not that scary. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, Bob. He's like, it's like, uh, I Help need to run. Out. Help me remember, Hayes. Um, search and scout, is pro that's probably my bread and butter, right? Maybe scouting sometimes, but I'm, I mean, I'm not going to be... With good wisdom, yeah, you're probably a searcher. Yeah, that's kind of how it feels. What skills did you go with? Religion, survival, nature, athletics. You, you, yeah, you don't want to be a. Athletics and you don't want to be an investigator. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to be a wisdom investigator. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably search. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm good at nature and religion, which are in skills that we call knowledge sometimes. But I mean, we have a bard in the party. We have a we have a bardic lore plus smart bard. You know. Um, I see his picture. Yeah, hey, I moved back to my other rig. Jamie Why? used my last one the past few weeks, so it's probably all fucked now. So. Oh, I knew it was her fault. Yeah. <laughs> right here, Jeff. Right here. Uh, act like you don't break technology. Okay, so I do, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, just saying. Yeah, I don't know why. It's, it's some sort of, like, graphics acceleration thing. It doesn't run smoothly. Like, if those... If Forge runs smooth and Discord runs choppy, and if I close the browser and open the browser, Discord runs smooth, but the browser runs choppy, it's like it doesn't understand how to multitask right now, so I don't know what's up. This one works, so... Sorry about that. I will have to go get the girls' pizza out of the oven here in a few minutes, but... Other than that, I'm good. Uh, so we awaken after arresting for... Wait, Olivia didn't get anything to eat at the basketball game? Dealt with the Fae. Yes. Jeff. So we're back. Jeff. Basically it's, it's fine, on our Jamie. List. I got it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, we are we in the common room of Zelgans? Yeah, you're in the common room. It's pretty much the normal folks uh, that are here. Um, since the last time you spent some time in Zelgans, you've earned a little bit of high helm rip. So these kind of, you know, not a whole bunch, but these guys are kind of starting to like, oh, you know. Recognize that you've been kind of out and doing some stuff. Uh, you have in your uh, active quest logs uh, three rumors in High Helm Heroes, the Baseless Game, the Klutzbeyer Antics, and the Language Tutors, and then you have Burn Town Tips. What's up? Yeah, I, I, is there a way to make Forian's quest log like a small tracker thing in the, instead of the big journal version? I like the big If version. there is, I don't know it. Oh, okay, I swear I used to. I swear I, there used to be a thing, but maybe it was a different module I'm thinking of or something. Um, I just got double click it and keep it minimized and pop yeah. it up once in a while. I figured that. Uh... Okay. Um. Okay. So I think um. I'm gonna get in character here in a second for this, but I think our characters last session had talked about. Uh, I think our characters last session had talked about dealing with the checking the, the what's going on in the night like we did and then burn town and then doing the burn town in the day hours right does that sound yeah right? i think so familiar okay um so um uh, go ahead so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah are you getting breakfast are you just hanging out here are you getting ready to leave what's, what's your plan <clears throat> i'm I'm, meet, I'm gonna meet up with uh 
uh, Baldrin, you know, Giller, and Bean. And uh, I think I would probably, I would, I would probably call Baldrin and, and ask him to come over. Probably sitting at the bar trying to chat up Epna while eating something. Um, uh, named Epna. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, Bean. Can you come over here, please? Yeah, come in. I guess. So, uh. I'm small enough. I'm squeezing him there. You're probably, there's no grid turned on on this map. So, so eating okay. breakfast. And I uh, kind of look at everyone. I think yesterday we talked about going to uh, Burn Town. Yes. Yes. I think I, that's a good place to start. My home. Always love to feel the heat of Burn Town. Let us, so, uh, let us go now. Before you do that, uh, it is... I'm going to leave this up to Ignok. Is Epna aware that you're flirting with her, or have you done so badly at it that she's just completely oblivious still? I think he's done an amazing job flirting, so she definitely likes him already. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But no, I, no, no, I think, I think he's, he's not, he's not like, he's not high charisma, so he's a little, he's probably a little scary to most people. Like, he, I, I think his personality is a lot like his god, like, fiery, but not in like a, but in like a way where you're afraid you're going to get burned, not uh, drawn to it. Um, but I do think whether or not she's interested, I would not expect her to initially, you know, immediately be interested or whatever, unless she just decided. Right. Um, but, but I think, uh, I think it was obvious, like then I think, it, I think it was obvious the last conversation they had that he was like trying to flirt, you know, even if he didn't okay. look right. So, she kind of winks at Ignok a little bit, and she says, uh -oh. uh, You know, I've always found the men that uh, successfully navigated Diamira's drop to be most impressive. And having lived in High Helm, you know what this is, I think. I was going to say, uh, do I know? Do I know? So Diamira's drop is... Uh, a legend that a dwarf uh, named Diamira climbed down a waterfall uh, to impress a, a blacksmith and win his hand in marriage. And ever since, nobody has managed to climb all the way down. Uh, lots of people often try and often fall, uh, sometimes suffering uh, considerable injury or occasionally death. Mm. Um. But it's kind of like a like a, a romantic challenge. Kind of thing that you know, love uh, one of you lovers do it to try to impress um, their darling. Okay. And there is a rumor that uh, that counts as one of the rumors. I'm gonna unlock that rumor on your uh, High Helm Heroes quest log. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so Diamirus is probably spelled in that rumor. Then. It is. Okay. For my journal. It this is. sounds like a you challenge. I don't think this would be a all of us challenge. I did not quite get the spelling right on my first try. Hi. Ignok, you want to crack at that last? You better get over there. Get down that waterfall. So, how do you get down Diamir's drop? Is it like a... Yeah. Like how so, do you get basically, <laughs> um, increasingly difficult athletics checks. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I just meant, like, fictionally. <laughs> like, like, uh, like uh, how would it be done? Is it something... So, I'm trying, yeah, to, so get in the, I'm trying to get in the headspace of... Why haven't I tried it before, or is it something right. I've considered? Very hard, um, very high, and you're basically climbing down, a, it's like a series of waterfalls, right? It's not like one big waterfall. It's a series of waterfalls, and each one gets kind of harder and harder to climb down. Right. Um, so the farther you get, the farther you get, the less of a fall you make. So if you fail way up top, a lot more fall damage. Oh shit! So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. Uh, <laughs> so she said, "What did she say?" She's always been impressed by people who. She's always been impressed by people that navigate it. Oh okay. 
I or try to navigate because nobody's nobody's made it all the way since the legend was born over a millennia ago. Oh God, <laughs> my my level one ass is never gonna play. No, no way, I'll go. Uh, so I I, I I say, uh, is that so? Uh, I I have plans to uh, to go down the drop. Oh, go ahead. Soon. He just kind of winks at you and grins a little bit. Okay. Mm. Uh, and then after overhearing this, old Elbert over here kind of catches your eye and kind of nods you over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll pop over there. He says, be careful, lad. People have died climbing that waterfall. Yeah, make, sure you're, make sure you're ready. Yes, uh, so I've so I've heard. I will not be overconfident to do this. Which one of you? It was uh, Giller that was a soldier, right? Yep. Um, Ignok too, but not not as cool of one. Like Ignok was like in the military because like all stone fists pretty much serve, but he he right. was like he was like a. Special unit. Sentinel. Yeah. yeah we okay, so Yulgar kind of comes over to you. And he says, uh, <laughs> Have you heard that the uh, some of the Knights of Last Wall are in town? I've heard now. Oh, yeah, there's 14 of them. 14 Knights Vigilant uh, recuperating in King's Heart, uh, led by a half orc knight. Named Sir Oscar. Hmm. Let me spell that for you. Because there's no way you'd think. <laughs> He's like, uh, they're, uh. They're, uh. Not getting the warmest of welcomes, unfortunately. Well, how come? Uh, you know, there's still a bit of prejudice against the orc. And the half orc and the descendants and high helm and they're recuperating and they're not really being bothered, but they're not really being helped either. Sounds like something we should check out. And that is another rumor <laughs> that I'm unlocking. There you go. We were just gonna say mission. So um, what what um, I was I was taking notes while you were doing it. I promise I was listening sure. too. But uh. Uh, no, I know. What, I know how it goes. I'm on the other side of that. What did, what did he? What did he say? The Oscar and these Knights of Last Wall were in High Helm for, or did did they know? They're just recuperating, basically. Um, they they they've been you know since the fall of Last Wall, uh, the Knights Vigilant, the remainder, remainders of it kind of travel around and you know do the nightly thing, and they're kind of in between uh, missions, for lack of a better word. Okay. At the moment, and they're recuperating in High Helm. Okay, cool. And and uh, and what was the what was the rumor that was going to kind of like prompt us to maybe you check them out? That they, did you say they were having a hard time or something? Or something? They're just not. They're not being treated particularly well because their leader is a half orc, oh, and okay, the so awesome prejudice is he's a half orc, and the prejudices of the dwarves are hard to shake. It's open more open than it once was. Like they're not being be treated like a hostily, but they're not being like if a traveling band of you know humans or dwarven warriors were coming through they'd probably be regaled with tales and have healers at their beck and call and things like that and they're just not getting that support gotcha okay thank you so much um mm -hmm. paul do you already have bardic lore at level one or is that your level two for you no that's level two okay <clears throat> okay so what i was going to say is because you're kind of a smart dude right do you have a... Barely. Yeah, uh, can, I, can I see the parties? Can I see party skills? Yeah, I guess I can. Uh, I can't see all of them now. I'll tell you, I was basically... I, I was going to say, I wanted to I wanted to say, everybody always remember that if Have is like telling us about something like that, and you're like, I wonder what the Knights of Last Wall are about. You ask, you know, you ask him if you can recall knowledge about the Knights of Last Wall, for example. If you think... Maybe my character knows who they are, and maybe that will help us in this interaction. I'm my character can't do that. 
stuff. He's uh, only if it's like religious or natural world type stuff. But like, if anyone has society, looks like Bean and Giller both have society training, uh, or like a good lore that or something. But they're man have high helm lore, but mm-hmm. yeah, they're not yeah, high helm. Oh, so yeah, and I have underworld lore. And also, no. <laughs> yeah, I. I mean, honestly, as a from the player side, you don't even really have to go like, I want to use this skill. You just, uh, you just, you just do recall knowledge, and it will secretly roll, and Have can see how well you did with any relevant skills. Like, uh, you just all, all you have to say is like, I want to see if, hey, Have, can I do I know anything about the Knights of the Last Wall? As a matter of fact, recall knowledge is untrained, so I'm going to ask you, Have. And also yep, with their rolling. remaster version of Recall Knowledge where the GM is within their right to just give you nothing instead of false info on crit fail, it, it's easier to adjudicate for GMs anyway. <laughs> is that on my like basic action tab thing? Uh, you get to it there. We also install the module. If you mouse over your token, you'll see like a little HUD pop up. Yeah. Right? You can go to uh, skills, looks like a little hand, and click that. You actually go to extras, Dave. Oh, is it extras for, to recall knowledge? Recall okay, yeah. Knowledge. Yeah, so it looks like, three, looks like three little cubes, three little blocks, so there's a recall yeah, knowledge hey, in there. recall knowledge. Sweet. Yeah, so I, I recall knowledge. Just I to see if I know anything about the next cool. last one. Uh, okay. Um, only thing you know is that they do have uh, uh, a bit of a reputation as... Um, a religious order of knights. Okay. I'll be right back. I gotta put Connor down before he had a fucking fit. Uh, take five, take a pee, get a pizza out of the oven, Jeff, whatever. Yeah, yeah I'll, going on. Real quick. I'll be back in a minute. Right. Hey, Josh. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how do I know how many, like, okay, if I go to my spells, I have... Four cantrips, and I have three first level spells, but I only have two slots. Yeah. But then I have a cult spells. No, well I have a, I have a, another cantrip under occult focus spells, and then I have focus spells. Yeah, it's a it's a lot for it's a lot, right? But I can explain easily what it all. But I'm like, but when like if I only have two slots, then the only thing I can use these two slots on are these first level spells, right? That is correct. You should have you should have three spells. One of them I think is True Strike because you're or no no Soothe. I have Soothe, Fear, and Lose the Path. Yes. Okay, so you have two slots per day, and anytime you cast. Any of those three spells you just mentioned, um, it will use one of those slots. Okay. So, so of those first level spells, uh, you can cast any combination of them twice in one day. You can cast soothe twice, or fear once, and lose the path once, or whatever. And the way that I'll talk about each part individually. The way that expands is every time you level up, you'll either gain one more slot. Of the spell rank you have now, you have rank one spells right now. I'm gonna, I'm calling it rank one, not first level, because that terminology right. is changing in remaster uh, to uh, make it less confusing. Because there's like levels of a dungeon, my character's level, level of spells. They try, they're trying to get rid of calling them first level, so it's first rank. Okay. But like when you level up to level two as a bard, you will get a third spell slot. Of rank one. Right. And as a bard, the way your spell casting works, every time you get a new spell slot, you learn a new spell. So instead of soothe, fear, and lose the path, you'll have those three, and you'll also add another rank one spell. Spell, yeah. Um, and then you'll have three slots with four choices to use those three slots on. And when you get level three, you'll gain two rank two spell slots. And now you'll be able to cast a new rank of spells, more powerful ones, at, out of those spell slots, but you'll still have your first level ones. Okay? So, does that make right. sense generally about the spell slot part of it? Yep. Okay. So, your bard cantrips, which should be things like 
I don't know what you have, but it could be shield, shield it could be telekinetic projectile. Telekinetic. Yep, yep. Guidance Those cantrips, you can just cast uh, unlimited, just many times as you want forever. Any cantrip, any any spell that's called a cantrip, you can always use it as much as you want. You can't run out of them uses per day. Okay, so the so my regular cantrips are shield, telekinetic, projectile, guidance, and bullhorn, and then my occult focus spell that's a cantrip is inspire courage. Yeah, do you see where it says occult focus spells or whatever? There's like a header. Yeah. If you uh -huh. if you click that, you can edit what that's called. I would change that to say composition spells. Okay. Because that's what those are, and that's why they're separated out from your other bard spells, because they're specifically composition spells. Yeah, then under that, and, uh, so the only... Under that, you should, have, you should have Inspire Courage. Right. That is a composition cantrip, which is... A, a special type of focus spell. It doesn't cost a focus point to cast, but you can modify it with focus points by, like, with things like Lingering Performance, which you have. Right. So so the building blocks here are, like, your focus cantrips, you can use them as much as you want, but you can only use one composition spell in the same turn. So right now you only have one composition spell, Inspire Courage. But if you had two of them, like if you had Hymn of Healing... Inspired Defense. There are other options that you can get as you level. You could still only cast one of them on the same turn. Otherwise, Bards could just use like all three of their actions casting three different buff cantrips and it would be pretty OP. Yeah. Um, so, Inspire Courage you can cast once per combat turn, but as many times per day as you want and it's going to buff the party. The, the actual focus spells are also composition spells, but they're used in different ways. Lingering performance. That's what it's called? Lingering composition. Lingering composition. The way that works is whenever you cast Inspire Courage, it lasts one round. So it lasts from your turn till the beginning of your next turn, right? Right. Lingering composition is a free action that you use as you're casting Inspire Courage. It spin. Okay, actually, it doesn't always spin. You use it. You make a performance check. If you do well on that performance check, your Inspire Courage, instead of lasting one round till the end of or the start of your next turn, it will last either three or four turn rounds, whether depending on whether you succeed or crit succeed. And if you succeed or crit succeed and you do extend it, so okay, I spent one action, now it's gonna last three, four rounds, I don't have to spend an action each each turn. Then it spends one focus point from you if you succeed. But if you fail that 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 spell specifically will tell you if you fail, you don't spend your focus point. Most focus spells, you spend it whether or not you succeed. That succeed one, or fail. That one is specifically you get to keep it if you fail, which is which is great. Yeah. Uh, and then your other composition spell should be called counter performance. Right. Okay, I'm going to make this really simple because in game terminology, it's like you can counter and uh, uh, I think it's auditory. Uh, in, in, in game terminology, this sounds very confusing because it's like you, if you roll a saving throw or your allies roll a saving throw against an auditory or visual effect, you can use performance to counter that auditory or visual effect in terms that are, that I had to kind of give it to myself in to really understand what that thing did. in at first is if our, if anyone in our group ever has to roll a saving throw against anything that's like this only affects you if you can see it this only affects you if you can hear it yeah like an illusion exactly an illusion or uh, in the t case of hearing it it could be like oh my god this banshee wails at you and like it makes you frightened right because it's auditory you have to hear that uh, so anytime any of us rolls a saving throw against an auditory or a visual effect um, you can go hey I'm going to spend a focus point and use counter performance. You roll a performance check, uh, which you'll be really good at because it's hard. We all, including you, if we have to, roll a, the saving throw like we normally would. We get to take the better of those two. Oh, Everyone individually gets to take either their <clears throat> will save result or whatever, or, or your performance, performance check, whichever's better. Insanely good 
focus spell. Because there's a lot of nasty, like, auditory visual effects, and it's like, oh god, I crit failed my will save. I am now fucking blinded and frightened six, or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but you might roll performance and roll like a 30, and it's like, oh cool, I crit succeed instead because the bard saved my ass. Cool, okay. Yeah, because I was like, uh, it's just like the the way that it's laid out, you're like, so I got all these slots, <laughs> but I've only got two slots, but I can cast these whenever I want, but I can cast these, and then these, once this is cast, then I can focus on the cantrip that I cast, but I got to use this focus pool. Yeah. It's like, damn, okay. It's a, it's, it's, a lot lot to, it's a lot to grok, especially for Bard and Witch, because Bard and Witch are the only classes that have focus cantrips. Basically, cantrips that are categorized differently than, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, witches are hex cantrips, yours are composition cantrips, but they're basically like in a different category. Most spellcasters, besides Bard and Witch, they don't have that. They just have cantrips. Like, their cantrips are all at the same place your telekinetic projectile is. Uh, but Bards and Witches, you know, you got a, you got two different types of cantrips. And it matters, the distinction matters, because you can only use one composition cantrip per turn. Until you get harmonies. Uh, <laughs> uh, what up, dog? He's, he's watching me like, what are you doing, bitch? Uh, got oh, boom. oh, hey, Paul, can I can I recommend something for you to do that can make it make it look a little less confusing? Your spell list. What's that? You know, on you on your are you on your character sheet on the spells right now? Yeah. The little magic wand that you normally click to navigate there. Yeah. Left click. Left click it a single time again. Hold on, I'm brushing <clears throat> Nora's teeth all of a sudden. <laughs> I thought she was having you drink something out of a sh or give her something to drink out of a straw. I didn't well, she just can't. Like, <laughs> I thought they were already in bed, and then she just came down here with her toothbrush, and I was like, "What is going on up there?" She's like, uh, "I'm fighting black, y'all." Okay, that's <laughs> good. Good dental hygiene, important. All right, get your tongue out. There you go. High five. Ooh. I still right. believe Matthew Perry passed. So, I can't. Bob Knight <laughs> died too. <laughs> what did he what did, I'm pretty sure he just said in his book that came out like a year ago, uh, people are going to be shocked when I die, but not surprised. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Okay. I mean, so I, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's tragic because I'm pretty sure he probably just died of cardiac arrest in a hot tub or something. Because uh, the that's what it apparently that's what it seemed like maybe happened. But got the kind of history he had with uh, drug addiction. Really, probably shouldn't be in a hot tub anyway. People don't realize how hard on your body hot tubs are. Like, um, yeah. Um. It, so if you go to the all right, go so I the, got the if you, sheet open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go navigate to the spellcasting tab, and then click that magic wand that you used to navigate to it one more time, left click it one time. It will we. It's a module, but it. it, it oh, okay. It cool. lists your spells in like a kind of easier to parse visually way. Yeah. Now you can't leave it on there all the time because when you need to like make changes, like oh, I gained a new spell at level two, you you have to go to the like other version, but. When you're in combat or in the middle of a session, it's not. It, it's for most people, it's easier to. No, and that's watch cool them. too because it 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 puts that way. It puts inspire courage into a spell category of focus. So then you it you know then you understand like okay then that goes with my focus spells. Uh, inspire courage. B. So hmm. it, hey, if it levels it, it. It labels it as a cantrip, so it puts it in the cantrip. Oh, I see what it does. But the <clears throat> I got spell you. category makes it a focus, so then you it's easy for you to be like, okay, so these go with this. He shouldn't have three focus points, should he? No, I mean, two. I'm a dwarf. Two. He should have two, right? Yeah. Okay. Quit. Put it back in, Paul. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Cheap, bitch. His, his yeah. max, I mean, his max should be two. That gets calculated by the system. Like that's actually it, mod, that's actually system. It's, it has it has three on there. It gave me three originally. Hey, I've tried to take it away, then I tried to take it back. What the fuck? Huh? Interesting. It, between between sessions, if you don't figure out why, 
give me ownership of his character sheet and I'll look at what rules Omen is giving him an increased max because no shot. I mean, you get one automatically as a bard uh, and then you'd get a second one from getting Lingering, lingering Comp. Yeah, yeah like, you should have two. There's just no way you get a third. Is it because of counterperformance? Because you start out with counterperformance and the system is reading it as a selected focus spell? Well, no, because counterperformance counter is the reason why you start with the one. You know? It should be one from counterperformance, two from lingering. Right. I mean, there's definitely a three here. All bards, all right, we'll, we'll all figure bards it out later. start with one because all bards have lingering or counter. But yeah. Right. Um, all right, so the only okay. thing I recall is that the Knights of Last War are a religious order. Yeah, um, they're uh, a, mil a militaristic, but a religious order. Um, That's all I had in here, so whatever you guys are going to do. Yeah, I think Ignox has a... Oh, we have uh, many leads we can pursue, but uh, since we are agreed to go to Burntown to help with the labor, we should do that. Yes. He, he looks around at everybody and he says, uh, you have a way to Cool your, keep yourselves cool. Uh, bring it. Because he's a forged dwarf, so like he does not get affected by um, whatever, that one level of severe heat or whatever. But, uh, yeah. Why to me either, would it? I can't, I can't remember if... You don't have resistance yet to anything. Okay. Well, my, yeah, my, well, mine's not specifically about the fire resistance, though I do have that. It's that I treat environmental heat effects as if they're one step less. Yeah. So if if it's severe heat in Burntown, I don't know which level it is, then I would treat it as normal. Uh, and if it's higher than that, I would treat it as one level lower, and yada yada. So, um, but yeah, uh, so uh, I... Hmm. I will lead the way to Burntown. I go. Yeah. Uh, there's no uh, particular scene for this one. Just let me just pop in a map of High Helm. Burn Town is in. What section is Burn Town in? I can't remember now. It's not telling me. King's Heart. King's Heart. I say, yeah. I thought it was King's Heart. Or... Okay, so let me. Because it's like we were up here and Burn Town was way down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me uh, just drop you guys tokens on this map. You'll have tokens to roll from and stuff. <clears throat> so we're going to Burn Town to investigate the second. Rumors. Uh, um, Burntown is for the Burntown camp. Yeah, it's not. A, it's uh, not a rumor. It's um, lots of contractors. Uh, like lot, tons of um, local artisans are being yeah. pulled away from Burntown and other places to work on the Torag Shield project. Yep. Um, so we're gonna go to Burntown, try to talk to Elgus Var Svarhagen. It looks like, and uh, uh, help out doing some some crafting or some uh, labor to make up for the, their laborers. They're being short on laborers. Yeah, so this is your contact. We're still active on Zelgans in. If you, if you. Oh, I thought I activated this. Okay. Uh, there we go. Hey. Hmm. I want to slip, um, what's her name? Espen? Espa. Espa. I want to slip Epna? her a silver. Epna. 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 What's her name? Epna? Epna. Yeah, Morgan. I want to slip Epna a silver and say, I take good care of me, girl, Ag Aggie. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Oh, by, by the way, while we're on the while we're on the way over here, Ignok says uh, he says to you all, uh, says, uh, "Have any of you tried uh, Diameter's drop?" Heard rumors. Heard about people doing it, but not succeeding in a long, long time. But I, I have never actually considered uh, doing this drop because I am terrified of heights, but uh, I could not let Epna know this. Ah. <laughs> I would, you definitely hit it well. I need to impress her. All right. Uh, that spirit I think is safe you should with go me. for it. Yeah. Yeah. And if it comes time to do it, to impress her, would you? Oh, I will. Uh, I may die. But if so, uh, I will at least die trying to impress a beautiful dwarf. Uh -huh. I had to mess with some settings there. Is that why it froze? Did it freeze? Yeah. What's that? I was oh, just trying to show you your contact there. Oh, damn. Oh, is she in a freak? A dwarf of freak, I guess? Mm hmm. Sweet. Oh, it's the second so arrow. <clears throat> She looks possessed. So did, did we? Her name is in the quest, Elga Starhagen. But uh, did we get? Did we actually get her name? Yeah, yeah. That was supposed to be your contact there. So oh. they've they've given you the, the basically her shop. You're supposed to meet her at her shop. Hey, can I, let me ask you a quick module question, real quick. Sure. Do you do you have tactical grid on? Did you install that also? I installed it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean. I, you don't have to change any settings in it. I, I love it, though, because I'm assuming it looks the same way for you, but part of what it does is, like, I only see the grid on this map if I mouse over my own token. Like, it's, yeah. It, I, I really like how it does that because for visually, you know? You can have the grid when you need it, but you can, like, not have it in your face when you don't. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, so you, uh, you come into her shop and you see this, you know, dwarven clearly... With some Afridi blood in her. Uh, a lot of the dwarves of Burntown do have a frit blood. Um, uh, she's wearing a heavy leather apron. Uh, she's got these long, uh, would-be elbow-length leather gloves kind of tucked into her belt for when she needs them. Um, she's got her hair braided back and kind of out of the way. Her her hair has a little bit of an incandescent glow to it, uh, almost like a candlelight light glow to her hair. Hmm. She's just kind of like, it looks like she's sorting through, um, sorting through like a uh, formula, like crafting formula and orders. So uh, look up at, uh, you, Ignok, and, uh, you know, Baldrin said, all right, you two do your, your thing. I think Ignok says, uh, he kind of like just, he puts his hand up at Baldrin, like <laughs> deferring to, to Baldrin to, to speak to her. So, hold on. Let me get out of my. So, um, I, I walk up to her and how big's the shop pay? I mean, can we all fit in here easily? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's a moderate. It's, it's, she's one of the more successful smiths. Of burnt town. So, it's good. Uh, it's a good size shop. I say hello. Good day, lady. Good. Good morning. Then. Um, my name's. What can Morgan. I do for you? You trying to place an order? Um. We we come here. What do we hold on? I don't know what we're doing here. Sorry. <laughs> what are we doing here? I was hey. looking at the wrong thing. Hey, hey, just just curious because I just want to know if like my. Heat protection of Forge Dwarf actually, like, actually protects me from damage here or not? Is it? Do, do you? Does it tell you is Burntown like 
mild heat, no, like normal mild heat, severe heat, extreme heat, whatever? Is it one of those? Um, there is a, a set of rules for, uh, for essentially there's a, a, a negative effect, a debuff called burn town burnout, where the physical exertion of heat sap your strength. And if you have fire resistance, or if you treat environmental heat effects, that they are one step less, you get one degree of success better when you make those checks. Oh, wow. That's amazing. But, but they're not, they're not using the like specific rules where they're like you take damage every hour because it's severe heat or whatever no this is going to be a fatigue issue and it could be damage if it gets bad enough hey i like it cool sounds cool so paul what we're here for is uh the they're they're looking for laborers they're short on laborers right. because a bunch of people are pulled away by torag shield project so we're, we're here to offer our services to fill in those gaps you're the mexicans uh, in front of home depot yes Hi, lady. So uh, we've come to offer some assistance. I got a strong back and a weak mind, so I'll be do be willing to do what you tell me. Well, I'd rather you have a strong mind than a weak back, but okay. Um, well, uh, she kind of takes a look at you and like eyeballs each of you. And uh, since Baldrin started talking, she looks at Baldrin and she goes, "Okay, what can you do? Can you smith? Uh, heavy labor? Good at math? Accounting?" Can you enchant items? What are you good at? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at math. I like okay, numbers. Okay, okay. Got a mind for numbers, all right. Uh, and she then turns to, uh, I think, Ignok, probably. And, uh, and what of you? What about sales? I can sell. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, there's not a word for salesman. I sent out a... Asking for help with the, the crafting and a little bit of bookkeeping, maybe. I can do the bookkeeping. Well, when that's when that's okay. I say, uh, I say, uh, I say first of all, Elga, bless the fire in your blood. You are, you are blessed. I, uh, I agree. Say, if you need a strong back, a wound. Treatment. Help tracking any of these things I can do. No, no craftsman yet, okay? Nobody can smith, all right. Uh, so I wonder kind of, okay, the, the attempts to get me are worse all the time. Um, all right, you, uh, in the armor, points at Giller. <laughs> Very heavy things. <laughs> Very heavy things. Uh, okay. Uh, and you, uh, Kobold. Hey. I say, go, go ahead, go ahead. What can you do? Can you craft? Are you... I'm very crafty. Uh, <laughs> good, good hunter. Uh, uh you're not learner. here to hunt. What are you... These people are crazy. Uh, okay, okay, um... Kind of just looking. Oh, damn, you guys really can't craft at all. I was okay. going to say, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're, I'm, we're I'm joking. I'm a dwarf, <laughs> and I'm not trained in any crafting. Terrible. Ignok, Shit, dwarf. Ignok, None of you are trained in crafting. Ignok Shit, says, dwarfs. Uh, Ignok says, if you, want, if you want cleric who can craft you sword, you get Torag. If you want cleric who will burn the fire, this is me. I mean, you're the one that came looking for the job, lad. Uh, we the job is what it is. Yeah, we just yeah, we heard you needed help. We did not know it was only you only needed crafting. Can 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 we not um uh move supplies around for you or something? I'm strong. I can at least do this. We will have to find you some work. Uh, clearly, you're all new to the craft, but you know we all start with imperfections and. You don't know a bar is metal till you've stuck it in the fire. Uh, what's important is you'll be ready to work early tomorrow. Very early. She kind of looks around. She says, oh, it's actually pretty early today. You want to work today? Hi. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, all right. So mornings are for labor. Afternoons are for chatter. So you'll be coming in and getting our jobs done. And after lunch, we'll check back and see how you're doing. Uh, right. The jobs. 
Uh, she kind of starts holding up fingers. First job, building fences. I've got a wrought iron job that's overdue, and shaping the pickets is simple work. Uh, second, you could try to uh, help repair with a crossbow. Uh, weapons arm got busted, so we'll need to make a new one, or I will make a new one if you can get my hot forge's elemental to wake up and cooperate. Um, you'll be assembling and then testing things once I've made the new piece. Third task is an abandoned shield project that needs some finishing touches on its magic and design. Uh, then later this afternoon, there will be some administrative work you could do. Uh, but it's mainly those three projects I need to help with. Uh, get as much done in the morning, and if you need to finish them up in the afternoon, that's fine. Uh, should take about a day. Maybe more, maybe less. Uh, if it takes less, I've got plenty more work for you. Uh, so ask any questions now, because once you get started, then I get started. I'm too busy. Uh, the fence project sounds like something I can do. So we need to gonna... build fences, repair a crossbow arm, and what was the shield project? Magic work? Um, essentially, uh, building fences is exactly what it sounds like. Um. There's uh, there's each 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 one of these is like a series of skill challenges basically. Okay. Um, building fences is is literally building the fence. Uh, crossbow repair. Um, you're gonna have to help with. Um, she's talked about an elemental in her hot forge. And uh, you being which one are you from Burn Town? Who's from Burn Town? Ignok. No. Ignok is. So you know that what they refer to as a hot forge is a forge that has a connection to the elemental plane of fire through a fire elemental. And that it is for getting things particularly hot, even for a forge. And so she said that she needed help corralling her fire elemental. So there's going to be a little bit of social work there and a little bit of assembly work there. That sounds fun for Paul. Yeah, and then uh, talk to the fire elemental like Gauntlegrim. The shield's finishing touches uh, does have some magic involved and some crafting involved. Uh, all of these guys have a variety of skills that can be used. We we are calling it the crafting, but. Crafting is just one option of many for all of these. Okay. Um, it, are, are these things where we're supposed to split up, or is this like a group effort to do each thing? Um, it's your choice. You can split up. You can do a group effort and like knock one one job out at a time. Uh, each job has basically certain steps that have to be done in order. I guess. I guess. I I mean, is it gonna? Is it? Is it gonna take more time? Oh, okay. Time. So, so there are three projects. And the morning has three work periods. Okay. Uh, each of you can complete one check during one of the three work periods. Okay. Um, so you have between you 12, 12 checks in the morning. Okay. Okay. So. Four of you for three hours. And then the afternoon has two work periods. So, we so if you don't, if there's something you don't finish, you could, you could come in in the afternoon. Um, and basically, this is, it's a, it's a, you know, the more of these things you complete, the the better you complete the job, the more reward you get, kind of situation. Um, okay, cool. So we can, um, we can do like the fence now, and then do like the crossbow later to get crafting skills. Different scratch skills. Do we have to stick to one task? You can do all three if you want. If you can. Okay. Um, they're also. You do, you know, just for a for 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 clarity's sake, um, it is very very hot, and there will be um, saving throws to resist that heat through the day. And during one of those phases, if you want to spend uh, an hour rehydrating, you can basically try to recover from some of the negative effects of that. So if you choose not to spend one of the three morning hours not working, you could try to rehydrate. Okay, so it um. You said this shield project. When you say shield project, um, my brain is like, oh, it's part of that Torag shield thing. Is it, or is it no, this is a literal thing? shield. This is a literal, like, uh, well, shield you would wear on your arm. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. Um, when you said it needs, um, like, finishing touches, like magic work, uh, mm -hmm. do religion is magic for me because I'm a cleric. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so I can be involved in that in that way. Yes. Okay. It's got me. It's got a list of the things I can do for it. Like I said, none, none, none of these are like this is the only check you can make. You know, they're all multiple choices here. Uh, some, some are harder because of the skill involved. But I sometimes forget that like religion and nature are like 
literal magic skills. They're like Arcana. They're just for divine and primal, yeah. you know? So um, so when you said magic touches, I'm like, damn, I don't have Arcana. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm fucking awesome at magic. I got religion for this reason. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I, Ignok says, uh, oh, I will work on this shield. I think I can help it with, uh, with magic. Like I said, you, you can split up or you can all work together. Let's go ahead and just give me the, the initiative. I'll pop the and put you in combat order so we can track time here. Uh, the new initiative tracker guys at the top of the screen. You can just click in the middle to roll your initiative. I know Paul and uh, Jamie haven't seen this before. It's a new module. Yeah, we're... They haven't seen the combat tracker at all, I don't think, unless we used it for, like, the last last week in yeah. uh, Faye thing. But... There's, like, cards across the top of the screen. Okay. Just pick them. God, what... I rolled. What happened? Okay. Just click, click there for your initiative. Uh. That... Oh. I only see two actors up top. Yeah. It's a combat um, carousel setting for like. About I see five. four, but I can change it. It, it's, it's I, a combat I just carousel. see myself and Ignok. Hey, it's a combat. It's, yeah. it's a turn. It's a combat carousel setting that hides anybody who hasn't acted yet from you. Um, oh, I thought that was just for NPCs. Okay. It, I I think I turned that off in combat carousel or whatever because what you call it, um, um, monks combat details all like specifically hides NPCs until they've acted. So I was already getting that functionality. I, I, I saved it. So it's also, I just turned combat tracker to large. It's not going to affect other people. Is it? I just turned mine to large. I had it set to large. I think In I thought I thought I thought that a soft force on making it large, but mine was still normal, but I just, uh, mm. Mm. uh yep. no, you're I just, fine. I just made it large. Cause it's like, it's a player side, side setting. All right, um, so Ignok is first. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, check this shield out. Okay. For the first hour. Okay. Uh, yeah, hour one. So the first hour, you don't have to roll any saving throws because you're you're just fresh into the heat. So. Okay. Uh, there's essentially two things that have to be done for the shield. There's two uh, creating the designs in the shield. Uh, and there is stabilizing the enchantments on the shield. Okay. Um, I, they don't have, they don't have to be done in any particular order. Um, but you know you have to. Uh, it's using the threshold system, right? Oh, okay, like victory, uh, uh, victory points. Like thing. victory point system. Um, I, so I would, I, would, I would start with design. Okay. So for design, uh, you can use art lore, dwarf lore, genealogy lore, crafting, religion, or society. Okay. You want me to roll from here, or is there a check? Your I can give. You, I can spit. I can spit it out for you. I just need to know which one you're going to do, so I don't spit them all out. Oh, I'm sorry. Religion. I have an interactive tool tooltip ready to do it too, if you didn't want to. But either way, it'll roll against your DC if you have an inline, I guess. Um. Okay. So uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, that says shields finishing touches. I said I was going to do the. Is that or is that that was still the the right thing that's right? creating the design that's the right thing yeah oh, okay gotcha there's 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 shields finishing, shields finishing touches is the everything. project that's uh, the whole project makes sense so make sure I got all right, right so thing. okay cool so i got a success for that first hour uh i guess uh um I'm and that to, actually yeah. has a threshold of once you you complete creating the designs on the shield hey amazing i love it and that takes my out that takes me an that hour that takes your hour yeah yeah, so I, I think, uh, yeah, 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 I just, uh, I see the thing, and I'm not a craftsman, but, like, I understand magic, and this is a magic shield, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, I pray, I, I spend the whole hour, uh, you know, just praying to Angrad to guide my hands to create the right design to make this shield ready to take into battle in his name. Uh, hit your next button oh, for sorry. Bean. You fine. All right, Bean. Are you working on the fences, the crossbow, or the shield? 
I'll, I'll take my hand at the fences, the build okay. fence. So, a new home finished and inhabited months ago still hasn't received the decorative wrought iron fence around its tiny, tiny yard. You're not assembling the fence or creating the scroll work. You're just creating the pickets, posts, and crossbars that make the fence. So, step one is stoking the fires, getting the, getting the forge hot enough to do its job. And you can use survival, athletics, or fortitude. Do I need to click for that, or is that you, just an You need to tell me which one you want to try, and then I'll spit it out for you. Say the three again. Here. Survival, athletics, fortitude. Oh, cool. When can you see what fortified or fortitude means? What, what that involves? The saving throw. So fortitude is a saving throw, like resisting heat. Okay. And, and if you're wondering what the optimal choice here for you is, it's either athletics or fortitude. Because you'd be rolling okay. athletics against DC 15, and you'd be rolling fortitude. You're one better at fortitude than you are athletics, but this DC is one higher for fortitude than athletics. So either one of those is the right choice for you. Okay, that's what I, I was I was figuring and leaning toward that. Okay, so do I just click it to roll? Mm-hmm. And I'm this would just, this would just determine on whether you're using like your strength or you're like using the okay. fact that you can resist you know heat and stuff and whatnot I guess. Oh, that's uh, a failure. Fudge. Are you accepting your failure or are you using your hero point? Can I, can I use hero? Point? You so you to, would write. You need to give yourself a hero point. I I put it in chat earlier, but you missed it. I noticed on the party sheet you didn't give yourself a hero point to start the session, oh, Jamie. I give her one. Um, it's faster for me to do it than tell everybody to get it. Because <laughs> I didn't uh, know. I, I didn't so you'll, know. you'll right-click the chat card there where it rolled it and then hit re-roll using a hero point. I got party, the party and mounts, actors directive. Mm -mm -mm, no, you need to be... Um, on the chat messages screen. Yeah, it's not, it's not opening. Hang on. You're on your own, girl. Your three flights are two stories up. I'm not climbing it. Oh, server connection. I wish you have lost the server. Jeff, fix our internet. Fix it, That's fine. It's not opening. Should it be okay, hang right on, there. chat log. Okay, here it is. Okay. All right, where do I click? So the the card where it says you rolled your fortitude saving throw at there the bottom, is. just right click it, hit re-roll using a hero point. Roll using hero point. Okay, ready? Okay. Oh, shit. So that's a success because of our, our house rule of hero points. Like, I need to write something okay. down. Uh, he didn't provide me a very good tracker for this, so I'm just trying to... Yeah, victory point things are always kind of like, how am I going to keep track of these damn numbers? If you if you want me to keep track of it, hey, I have my session notes open, you can just... I'm, I'm, That's I'm, okay, I'm, I've got it. So I'm happy to do it if it'll help you. Okay, so... Uh, the threshold for building th the first part of that is one, so you have successfully stoked the fires, and now the next step on that one is available if you or somebody else wants to join your next round. So if you'll click your chat card, uh, your click your uh, initiative card at the top of the screen, it'll go to the next person. Initiative card. Yep. You are next. Gilbert Grindelwald. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I give a shout at the crossbow. Why not? You work on the crossbow. Yeah. So, the first thing you have to do to work on the crossbow is convince the elemental that it needs to fire up the hot forge. So you can do that with intimidation, deception, diplomacy, nature, stealth, or thievery. And if none of that sounds great to you, you can go to a different project if you want. <laughs> uh, fantastic at intimidation, but I could try that. Okay. Time to bully a fire elemental. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Only well, got to roll a ten or better, I guess. That's not. You jinxed okay. the shit out of yourself. All right. 
<laughs> you didn't see that. Okay, again, saved by the house rule. Jesus. Almost a 20, but... I, All right. get off the I can't imagine going back to the days of a few weeks ago, your, when we didn't use this house rule for hero points. It was so unfun having a meta currency where you just constantly fail into failure. <laughs> yep. All right, so you you have convinced the elemental to to step in line. Uh, so the next step is available there. So uh, I forgot to, I forgot to read something though. Uh, although the stock of this heavy crossbow survived being hit by a giant's boulder, the steel bow arm didn't. Forging a replacement requires considerable skill, which Elgo will handle. Unfortunately, the elemental spirits that fuel the forge uh, she needs for the task are being stubborn, so she needs someone to encourage their cooperation. Once she forges the replacement piece, she will need someone to reassemble the crossbow and ensure that it's ca calibrated for maximum accuracy. The elementals themselves resemble a pair of fiery house cats. Oh my god. Don't tell me that. Can we get some catnip somewhere? <laughs> All right, so... He hit, him with the, he hit him with the dwarven army sergeant. <laughs> yeah. That bitch a lot of you, fuckers. filthy slobs! What are you doing? <laughs> Get to work. Yeah, one of my dislikes is house cats. <laughs> it's funny. I, this is a completely meta thing that you guys wouldn't know, uh, because he just intimidated them into it. Uh, the elementals insist they can't burn properly without a breakfast of rare oils. A lie. They've already been fed. Although a PC can try to steal those oils from Elgin's storeroom with the stealth or thievery check above. How would That's you very cat-like. So can you talk to the the cat ele the elementals? They yeah, they they understand they understand dwarven. Oh, dwarven. Dwarven and pyric. Right. Yeah, that's like the new uh, name for the whatever it was before. I don't think it's funny. The the elemental cats are lying about being fed and wanting to be fed again. It's very cat. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, how would you I ever know, know that though? Yeah. If you cho if you chose to use the thievery or okay. stealth okay. role, then I would tell you how you did it. Okay. I just thought it was funny, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Cool. Or, or maybe That's if you cool. just tried to talk to them first. You know? They might have been like... Yeah. They might have told them. Oh, they're going to do what they want to do. <laughs> Alright, so that's uh, your first hour. Giller, uh, move on to old Baldrin Moonbeard. Alright, so I would have probably went with... Hit uh, the next button, Jeff. Oh, yeah. You bitch. I am. I <laughs> hitting things, so I'm not used to... I would have probably went with Gillard because I was going to originally try to, you know, talk up... Okay. The, so I'll so, do step two. So of that Gillard one. has yelled at the elementals and snapped them in the line. Uh, so now it is actually reassembling the crossbow. Um, yes, you have zero XP because we're doing milestone uh, levels in this because it's so. Right. Sorry. Like we're going to go several sessions likely without any combat. Yeah, so. yeah. I just I looked over and was like, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't feel Not right. <laughs> I know when the first level comes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I looked through the whole book and did the math on the whole book, and the math just doesn't hold up at all in the entire first book. So. I just totally forgot we were doing that. Yeah. So, to begin to reassemble the crossbow, you have several choices. You can use crafting, thievery, perception, or reflex. I'll use... Ooh, thievery's five. Man. I'm not too... Um... So, Baldwin took the repair of the crossbow as well? He's, he's working on the crossbow. He's on the step two reassembly. What's what what funny is when you were having Elga describe to us what needed to be done. Crafting, you, no. Uh, Thievery, yes. I, unless I either misheard you or you accidentally said uh, re repair with a crossbow. And I was like, oh. fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Shoot that uh, right. cross. <laughs> That's a good way to repair Please. something. Just fucking blast it with a bolt. <laughs> you, you met a guy that was repairing a fence with profanity earlier, so you know. it's Right. It's true. Uh, I, I guess I like I'm it. going to roll Thievery. All right. I keep rolling the way I am. You can hear a kobold parent offense with profanity. All right. Exactly. All right. So using your skilled and nimble fingers, that used to messing with thieves' tools and picking locks, you managed to reassemble the crossbow. Oh. Uh -huh. So now there is one step left on the crossbow, and that is uh, fine-tuning the aim. So somebody else will have to do that next round. Ha, All right. Hey, Bean, stand over here. <laughs> uh, Click events. on your uh, on your initiative card up there, Paul. I'm going to go to the next person. Oh. Did 
that do it? There you go. Ignock. Now. Such a badass picture, man. We need this because now you're getting hot. Thanks. Got to give it to uh, give it up to uh, you know the Bing AI art. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just really fucking good at cool. cool portraits. All right, so that counts as a crit success because you have heat resistance. That's because I have fire resist and treat heat slower. Is that why? Or, I don't, yeah, they don't stack. One or the other, one, one or the other gives but you I one degree of success better. So you're really just not even feeling the heat. You're just like, bitch. Yeah, I mean, I live here, right? So <laughs> from uh, town. So uh, I'm going to continue working on the shield. Uh, you said I finished the designs. You so, finished creating designs, so now you're you stabilize enchantments, which is arcana, occultism, or religion. And I'm just going to take a guess at which one you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to. I don't think I want to use my plus zero of those other two. Ooh, yes. Okay. Yes. Failing myself, maybe. So uh, you said finishing touches? Finish, you're stabilizing enchantments. Stabilizing the enchantments. Okay, so yeah. So, 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 so I did the design, and then now I'm like, I think I feel, I feel, I think I feel the magic of it um, rocking back. It's going to scramble my designs that I just worked hard on. Um, and I'm and I'm like no, so I just I got to use like my force of will and my my power that I get from Angrad and uh, just stabilize. Shield's not done yet, but you think that if you get a chance, it's just a little bit more stable. They'll be good to go. Sweet, thank you. Uh, next turn. Bean, are you going to continue working on the fences? So at the beginning of it, um, you said we need to do certain things like. Uh, do the pickets, the posts, the crossbars? Um, right. So there's so there's two more, there's two more steps in in building the fence. Right. You you've done step one, which is stoking the fires. Step two is hammering iron, and step three is quality control. Are we are we supposed to roll the fort save for heat at the beginning of our turns? Oh yes, you are. You, yeah. you only had me do it. That's yeah, I was going to have you do it each on your turn. I just forgot to let me spit it back out here. Give me that fortitude save that I just spit in the chat there, Jamie. When I, dude, when I'm the GM, I'm the king of forgetting to ask people to make those, like, do this at the beginning of your turn. Alright, so you're okay for now. You're hot, but you're not not falling apart on you. Uh, thank you. Um, you said hammer and iron, and what was the second one? Quality control. Quality control. Oh, good old quality control. Okay. So, I guess I'm going to keep rolling the fortitude? Is that... Is that... Well, no, not yet, because uh, there's different skills now. Oh, so to okay. hammer the iron, you can use either crafting or athletics. Hammer and iron sounds like it would be more of a crafting. So let's give a shot with that. Okay. Okay. Good. I hate these dice. All right, you did not successfully hammer iron and you don't have a hero point right now so you just didn't didn't successfully build anything yet it's okay failure is part of life so yeah okay so, so switch next because that's it right Done with my that's turn. that's your that's your hour yeah hey jamie yeah i want to mention to you it's 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 always great to try to go fiction first like you did there where you're like Oh, I got a hammer iron. I think I should roll crafting because it makes sense to me, right? Yeah. But both of those checks are hammering the iron. One of them is just, are you more precise with a hammer? That's crafting. And one of them is like using brute strength to hammer. And the DCs represent that. This is an easier task with crafting, but only if you're good at crafting. So you have plus zero in crafting. So you would have had to roll a 14 on your d20 to succeed that. Whereas you have a plus 7 athletics, so you only needed a 10 to, on that. So like, you definitely should choose athletics over crafting. Uh, and that's why. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Abe didn't stop you because he, he did it the right way. GM shouldn't like uh, tell you yeah. what to roll. Uh, I, I just want to make sure you understand the crafting and the athletics, it's okay to choose the one you know you're better at because they are both hammering. It's not like 
you, you should roll with crafting or else you're not a good role player. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Well, that makes <laughs> sense because quality and control didn't sound like it's very, it would be very hard. Uh, well, you got to get to quality control. You got to successfully build it first. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, Gillert Grindelwald, what we got going on here, buddy? I guess I'd probably still continue to work on that crossbow, I think, right? All right, so the last thing to do with the crossbow is to fine-tune the aim, and this is the ranged attack roll. I mean, I'm not atrocious at that, right? Make a ranged attack roll. Well, I don't have anything ranged, so... <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> I, think, I think you can do it, since we don't have magic weapons, I think you could do it from... Can you roll from... I don't think you can roll from your proficiencies. <laughs> what the fuck? How do you do that? I guess you just figure out what the modifier would be in just the manual. Yeah, I mean, you'd be... Well, you're plus five with martial weapons. Yeah. And then you have... What kind of dex? One from dex. So you'd be a plus six. D20 plus six. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you just can't... Can I, I just, uh, add a weapon to can I add do that? Yeah, just do yeah. The, the dice tray right, in the bottom right. Twenty plus six. Okay. Yeah, you hit. You successfully have calibrated the crossbow, and the crossbow project is complete. I think you see him but, over there, kind of trying to aim. I don't understand why people like this range stuff. <laughs> but because I uh, forget to do things, here's your saving throw. He did. He did repair with the crossbow. <laughs> 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 he actually did. All right. So you're not worn out. You haven't succumbed to. Burn town, burn out. Uh, hit next, and we'll let Baldrin do round two. Okay. All right, Baldrin, so the crossbow's done. There's the shield, and there's the fences. All right, so where do I roll the fortitude save, Pave? Hey? Sure, oh. let, me, let me spit it back out for you again real quick. Just in the chat, you just click it there, yeah. All right, so you're good. You don't have fatigue. I... Good job, Gillard. I'm gonna go help Bean. I heard, I heard a failure over there. <laughs> <laughs> How do you hear a failure? What did you What did you hear that made you think she failed? Cussing. I like that. I, like the, yeah, I, I, I like just heard. We're I just talking to each other at the end of each hour, like keeping each other apprised of how it's going. You know, that's how I was imagining. Yeah, you know, I was just feeling like I was over there, like you know, uh, Gillard was getting ready to like fire this crossbow, and I just heard. Bean being like, damn it, blah, 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 blah. like, ah, oh, she must have failed. That means All right, so something. I'm going to go over and help her. So you got crafting or athletics as your choices for, for hammering oh, iron. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we go to the shield. <laughs> uh, what's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second thought, not going to help Bean. Such a silly place. <laughs> Actually, I get yeah, over man. there and I'm like, ooh, that does look kind of tough. <laughs> I'm going to head over to the shield. Are you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you gonna cram in on Josh's <laughs> on the uh, Ignox shield shield work. Um, so he looks like he's been stabilizing the enchantments, and uh, you have three choices for how to do that: Arcana, Occultism, and Religion. Hey, All right, Occultism. Yo. Uh, two two questions, both about the guidance spell. I thought I had prepared guidance pre-session, but I had I think Reed Aura in the spot where I thought I had it. Permission to change that, like have had guidance prepared instead of Redor. Yeah. Okay. Um, second question: Can I cast guidance on Baldrin because he's like doing the same task as me? Yeah, it's, I think it's so. Just one action. I mean, <laughs> it, yeah. The, 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 the question is though: Does it make sense for me to cast guidance on him? Uh, because no, I don't think it does. Never mind. I mean, okay. this, no. I mean, the duration of this spell is till the start of my next turn. There's no way I can decide to cast it on him at the time when it's the right six seconds. That makes no sense. Um, okay. Role play wise, I'll cast guidance on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, he, I'm, he prays for you. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you with prayers. All right, I'm going to use occultism. Yeah, I would. <laughs> oh. oh. Are you going to use your, you gonna use your hero point? Fail? Do I hear a fail? You, right now you hear a fail. Let's see if that fail stays a fail. Uh, this is only I'll hour use it. two, right? I'm hour going. two, yeah. Yeah, oh, we still crap. have a third round of this thing. This hey, week. take those away. Time. Okay. I'm, take I'm what gonna away? 
I'm going to use my hero point. Might as well. Okay, so you just right-click the, the chat card where it rolled and hit reroll using a hero point. Oh, you don't have a hero point. You didn't give yourself a hero point at the start. All right. Now you got a hero point. One. I have one. Now I gave you one. So um, right-click the card, reroll using a hero point. That's weird. The party sheet showed me him having one earlier when I saw it look. There you go. Success. All right, so you... Finish stabilizing the enchantments on the shield, and the shield is complete. Ah, that's a nice looking shield. So you, so, so we really we worked on that together that whole hour. Yeah, um, that second hour. So yes. Yeah, so I, I, I think, um, yeah, I think my version of guidance was just like, uh, we'll talk Claire explaining how. <laughs> how you need to like uh st stabilize the magic as it fights back against you and of course the whole time you're like yeah i know except it's not religion dipshit like it's not prayers it's like this weird occult shit i have <laughs> yeah, i like it all right so hit next paul so that we go to the top of the next round next your your initiative card just click yeah. your initiative card oh hold on i have to close that what the hell I'm getting two sound effects for that. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, yeah. Oh, all right, I'm going to have all of you roll this fortitude save. It's if you have top. It's if you have a top of the round and a it's your turn effect. They'll they'll both play when it's top of the round. So we all click yeah. this DC. Yeah, go ahead and everybody roll the burnt town burnout effect at the beginning here this time. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go back. Mute forever. Is. Nope. <laughs> It's a chat card. It's up there just a little bit. Yeah, All right. I'm okay. And why is it not? I like it hot. Letting me. Are you clicking the DC 13 fortitude? All right. Hang on. I'm jumping to the bottom. It's up a couple because other people have rolled it now. It's above my card. Yeah. I'm trying to find it. Hang on. Yeah, I'll just spit it out again. There you go. At the bottom. Jump to the bottom. Damn it. Okay. Ah. Nobody's fatigued again. All right. Hey. Okay. Lucky bastards. <laughs> we like all right, so all that's left is to finish the building the fence uh, parts. So we're still on step two, hammering iron. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make my way over there, and I'm gonna say. Uh... Bean, uh, Bean's the only one that's done work on this, right? Yes. Yeah. I said, Bean, uh, will you please uh, show me what work needs to be done over here? I said, good. What, what did she successfully do? She tempered something, right? She stoked the fires. Yeah, I say I just, and it was hammer and iron that I failed on. I so said, you did, it looks like you did fantastic work stoking these flames. Engrad would be proud. Agreed, and now I just have to hammer the iron uh, for the oh. second step. Okay, well, this is not going to be done with any sort of uh, finesse, but let me give it a try. Nope, I'm going to take my L. Nope, okay. you know what? I've got two hero points. I'm a journal maker. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. May life. If I, only had one, if I only had one, I was going to let it go. All right. Okay. So you've hammered a good bit of it out, but uh, hammering is not yet finished. Okay. Damn. Oh. End your turn. Damn it. Yep. <laughs> Play your side of things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, the only thing left for you to do is to keep hammering iron. So crafting or athletics. Keep Let's pounding that metal. Whoa. Yay! All, right. All right, the hammers have been ironed, the raw parts are made, and now you're on to quality control. Uh, hit next and we'll get the next okay. person. Okay. That's I did. Go next. All right, Gillard, you're in, your, your only option right now is to rest and rehydrate, which you don't need to because you've been passing your checks, or to do a little quality control. Yep. 
guess I'll try this. Will not try that very successfully. Oh well. They appear to be made of some sort of metal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're right there. <laughs> All right, so we could do crafting or perception, right? Yep. Uh, so I guess it's crafting it is. No, perception for sure. No, what the hell? I failed either way, but that's weird. Welcome to the Five Club. Okay, so at the end of hour three, that's the end of the morning shift. So, let's see here. One more task, guys. <laughs> we have so one. Elga, uh, you know, wraps up her stuff. And, uh, you know, the stuff she's working on, she comes over and she says, Oh! Uh, you've done quite well on most of this stuff. Uh, the shield looks great. Uh, crossbow, she picks up the crossbow and kind of cocks it and shoots it. And she's like, oh, that's that's right on point. That's awesome. That's great stuff. Um, let's go and uh, I'll treat you to some lunch. And we'll come back and we'll uh, continue any projects you don't have finished. Look like the fences, fence parts aren't quite ready yet. Uh, and there's a few few other little things I could use your help with. Ah, what you cooking? I'm not. I'm buying. Ah, what you buying? Come on, you'll <laughs> find out. While we're, while we're walking to, uh, while we're following Elga to uh, to our lunch, I turn to Bean and I say, Bean, I know you, uh, I know you, uh, live here. You are a citizen of High Helm. Uh, and a respected one at that. But uh, I do not think it is a surprise that uh, the jobs started by dwarves this morning were the ones finished. <laughs> I laugh and I say, agree, agree. Uh, but being who I am, I was happy to assist. And my teammates couldn't have been a better choice to help finish the job. Yeah, I, I kid only. You did wonderful. In fact, it's a Baldrin and Giller <laughs> who couldn't... <laughs> they couldn't even find the imperfections in the quality control there. Now we have to come back and work more this afternoon. Amateurs. Amateurs. <laughs> During lunch, he takes you to a local curry place. And you can imagine the curry in Burntown. Pretty spicy. <laughs> I say it's hot. Um, and during that hour that you're in there eating, you still got to make another fortitude save. So everybody make that. Is it? Are we at Embers? Uh, you can be. Okay. It, didn't, it doesn't tell me specific, specifically. It just says, "Oh, God, shit!" Where is my fortitude? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I, so I still get one step better, right? You do. That becomes a regular failure for you. I can I not see that crap? Um, it's rolled up a little bit. Paul and uh, Jamie still need to make that fortitude safe. I know. I'm looking. Damn. Do I do I accept a failure or do I use my last hero point? Oh, another failure. Can I not see it? It's okay, hot. Uh, hero point. I can't hero point it. I'll, I'll spit it out again, Jamie. You can just, just at the bottom again. Pretty sure we're all out of hero points by now. I've already burned up two. <laughs> yeah, I think so. We, we all right, beans we okay. We haven't given any out for the session. We're two hours in, but you know, you know, just well, you know. GM, GM yeah. might, GM might I'm not. Uh, I'm, I've decided I'm not going to do it based on hours. I'm going to do it based on like when you guys recommend it. When like when people uh, do something cool, do something interesting, do something funny. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent agree. Especially with the house roll we're using, we we don't need to be giving out like on a timer or whatever. Yeah, um, but so. I so, like, I, would like to, <laughs> I would like to not. Did we be all honest. pass? All except, um, let's see, we... Baldrin and Giller both failed, right? So I got to take an hour to drink, right? Well, no, hold on. What, what happens mechanically is you get fatigued. Um, oh, so let's see. Yeah. Really stay in conditions and feeble, deaf, and gram. Where the fuck is fatigued? There it is. And Baldrin. Okay. 
So you you can use the next hour trying to rehydrate and get rid of that, or you can just fuck it and move on. Fuck it, chuck a football. So she feeds you some of the spiciest curry you've ever fucking had. Huh. Your tongues are on fire. You're definitely gonna have the shits later. This is this is the. Um, I'm hey, taking an hey, hour hey, for hey. water. This is this is from the High Helm book. When I was writing my background, I, I took some stuff from it and uh, I put I put it in my background that um, Ignok is like one of the few non fire plane natives uh, who who eats the uh, the main menu at Embers, which. Uh, there's a bar where you just got fed. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, they, they serve a they serve a separate menu for, like, normal people, and then they serve their main menu for uh, uh, people who can handle that heat, truly, or they want to just torture or whatever. Uh, or just ask for spice, super spicy. So, yeah. Uh, Ignok, Ignok loves the spicy food. Does, so we go. Does, does anyone, is anyone, like, super effed up by, like, the super spicy curry? Or is everybody kind of, like, into it, your characters. I mean, no, I'm into it. Um, I think Jamie's muted. I was trying to listen to something. Um, with my background and my mother being, you know, supplying that restaurant, figured I'd be trying some different things. So to me, I don't think this would bother <clears throat> me. Yeah, beans probably. Bean probably loves the spicy food, right? I mean, you're like a you're like a creature of heat, like Ignok, you know? Right. You're gonna you're gonna right. be breathing fire soon. Yeah. A little, a little curry yeah. in the mouth, so, nothing like some fire. So, <laughs> yeah, I feel like cool. it, it. It's it's a familiar taste that I'm really liking, and I'm like, this is just. Okay, so we. So we have to come back to work after lunch because we didn't. Well, I mean, we did a pretty good job. We got a lot. Of you did a pretty good job, but she's going to offer you extra jobs now because you succeeded so well in the morning. Oh. Uh, you can get earn like bonuses for this later. So as you come back, she says, uh, "Okay, well, you can uh, uh, finish up the fence work. Uh, if some of you have some other things, uh, we have uh, some restocking that needs to be done. Uh, some customer service issues." And some administrative duty, duties, some bookkeeping. So if one of you or any of you want to work on any of those, um, feel free to do that. I would definitely prefer you finish the fence. She said but restocking what? Restocking, customer service, yeah, and bookkeeping. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, I well, can do customer service. I, I, and there's, there's yeah. two hours. There's two, two rounds in the afternoon. Yeah, I, I'll I'll help. I'll finish the fence. I have a good, I have a really good perception, so I should be able to finish that. Um, and then I, I'm pretty sure based on the descriptions of those other things, my I would have to try to help with restocking. I sure, <laughs> there's no way customer service or bookkeeping is going to be something I can help with in a valuable way. Um. So I oh, oh yeah I'm done. they're an issue still uh, so yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna go try to finish the fence tell them uh, I will do this quality control I say uh, I'm I'm praying during the hour and I'm saying I'm saying uh, Englad guide my eyes to the imperfections in this metal and burn them away. <laughs> and Grad whispers into your head and says, Bitch, I'm a war god, not a crafting god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Huh. All, right. All right. Mr. Bean. Miss Bean. Yes. Okay, so we're finishing the fence. You can finish the fence, or you can do bookkeeping, customer service, or restocking. But well, they uh, prefer we finish the fence, right? She definitely wants the fence to be finished as a priority, yeah. Yeah, I said, I think I just want to, you know, once I start something, I want to be completionist and finish it. Okay. Um, yeah. Crafting or perception. Uh, well, let's go with a higher one. 
Let's see. Wait a minute. You do want. You definitely want perception. You have, yes. you have say, plus okay, zero yep. in crafting. I know. I was like, okay, press. No matter how okay, bad right. you are at perception, it's above plus zero because it just has to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible right, okay. to be untrained. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So you finish quality control, you throw out some bars that were not done quite well, you you pick out the best pieces, and the fence is, is or, or the fence is ready to ship out. So the fence is done. I think I think at the end of the hour I say I see I see uh uh father. You your your power is channeled through the cobalt. Like he's like, he's like, yes, my prayers were answered, like, but it was, it was just the kobold who, who, who got the work done. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, anger. Sure. anger <laughs> All right, so I'm done. Right, I'm going. Yeah, next. you hit next. Yeah. Okay. All right, now, you don't have to do any of these, Giller. There's bookkeeping, there's customer service, there's restocking, or you can try to rehydrate and try to get rid of your fatigue. So. <clears throat> Uh, it's the I, afternoon already, right? It is the afternoon. I, yeah, I just try restock. I, say, I, have a, okay. I, have a, I have a question for you, Have Because usually sure. you, know, you got a long rest to get rid of fatigue. You're mm -hmm. saying we can spend an hour to unfatigue, but are, like, if there's he, only if 30 he, minutes. If he, if he doesn't do that, and then we're done with the afternoon rounds or whatever, is it possible for him to like try to get rid of the fatigue by rehydrating after that, or is it uh, or, let me look. I feel like it's. I was probably just gonna use my last round. Go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. Just go ahead and. The the fatigue condition ends immediately once you recover from the affliction, rather than requiring a full night's rest. So I would say, yeah, it'd be possible too. Oh, I see. Oh, nice. So it's that's that's really cool. It's like if you just chill and drink water, you'll get rid of this fatigue. It's not like the kind where you gotta rest. But if you chill and drink water, it takes time. So you're either going to have to live with the penalties for now or not. Hmm. What are you going to do? You want to drink or you want to re, uh, restock? Restock. All right. So you get three choices. Labor, lore, athletics, or fortitude. Well, I think I know which one will go out of that. And the description is forges need fuel, smithing needs iron, and moving those resources from local warehouses to Elga storerooms takes time she doesn't have. Somebody with a strong back can save her a few hours by restocking her supplies. And you do. This is only a one threshold thing, so the restocking is complete. She was, yeah, yeah. She was talking all kinds of shit up front, like about how we're not good craftsmen, so we're going to be useless. But look, they did need, there was work to be done for us fucking muscle heads. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. Um, I will. So I told have, Jeff in the chat, you know, of Facebook. Doing yeah, the, I'll just do the customer service instead of drinking water. Okay. Clients periodically visit to complain about a broken tool, inquire about commissioning items, or ask other questions that Elga would rather not suffer as distractions. What's more, her production backlog inspires impatient clients to stop by and demand progress updates that only set her further behind, and the. The customer service task is called customer tantrums. So nice. you can use merchant lore, intimidation, deception, or diplomacy. I will use... Let's see. I guess I'm going to use... Hold on. I guess I'm <laughs> going to use intimidation. I love the idea of just bullying the customers for being annoying. Like what every yeah. what every customer service person yeah. wishes they could do. Right, they're not my customers. The exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're not my customers, so I'm, I'm just a tip. <laughs> so I'm gonna be a real asshole. I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'm thinking about. It. Let me advance time. We should be. Yeah, we'll put it about there. Okay, yeah, so you, you deal with a couple of Karens, but in... Tell me how you deal with them. What do you, what do, you do? They're, they're complaining customers. What do, you, what do you say to them when you intimidate them? Oh, Karen. Um, so, the, well, I guess, you know, people are coming in and they're bitching about things not being done on time. 
And then mm-hmm. I just kind of turn around, turn it around on him, and say, you know, like, well, I'm up here dealing with your smart ass mouth, and I should be back there working on your project. You know, like I kind of flip it around on him. Okay, okay. You, you, a few of them leave feeling a little chagrined, and you think maybe they won't come back for at least a couple of days to check on their overdue projects. Hit the end turn, please, sir. And then you know, some people I just say no. <laughs> go to hell <laughs> alright we need another round of saving throws from everybody oh great now I'm going down the tubes for real hey I want to nominate Jamie for a hero point yeah. okay any particular reason or just uh <laughs> Her wonderful enthusiasm. Okay. <laughs> so we've got Bean, critical success, not feeling that heat. We got Baldrin being successful. Oh. That was hovering on a one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> dude, I'm so, <laughs> so with afflictions, when you succeed, you go like up a level, right? Yeah, you reduce the level by one. Okay. So you get rid of your fatigue there, Baldrin. All right. And me? Did you succeed? I didn't see your roll. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. So you, you work through the pain. Yeah. So, uh, Being an asshole paid off. <laughs> <laughs> did, um... Did, um... Was that, was... Well, you, didn't, you didn't say, but was that, like... Is there more work to be done on customer service? No, customer service is complete. The only thing left is bookkeeping. Well, <laughs> I can do that maybe. if you want. Yeah. Okay, lots of choices here. Um, accounting lore, guild lore, high helm lore, merchant lore, scribing lore, society, arcana, or perception. Well, I am so thankful that perception is on that list. Because <laughs> I would be at plus zero or worse at every other one of the things you said. So updating logs, sorting receipts, writing up material requests, and more requires some of Elga's attention each week, and she'd love to have an attentive, math-savvy assistant handle her bookkeeping backlog. Oh, God. A wide range of additional lore skills are suitable for this task, including any that might be used for a medium size business. But there's a perception. It's, that's, it's one of the things I really like about the uh, Victory Points system, is that you can always go like, yeah, let's 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 put it something that pretty much anybody can do if they need to like this, but the DC will be higher, um, usually. Uh, yeah, I imagine this DC is higher than using lures and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's the it's the highest tied with Arcana for the different different DCs. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm not I'm not math savvy whatsoever. So th- this is me just paying attention is, to the receipts. This, yeah. this is me like <laughs> looking around like trying to follow the lead of like people who know what they're doing, doing stuff and like being like, Oh, like trying to, what papers are the right papers to get or whatever. We'll see how I do. Damn. <laughs> All right. So uh, even with that, like it's I'm not, I'm just no, not built for it. All right. This kind of work is not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bean, do you want to try to do the administrative work or you want to just be like, nah, that ain't for me. You're muted. Let me give it a shot. Okay. Based on these skills, I'm guessing you're going to want perception too. You also cannot make heads or tails of the receipts and orders. Fair enough. I can give it a shot. Well, Gilder's next, so we'll we'll get there. That's right. Hit next there, Jamie. Hey, Hayes. Can I I ask you a question? Is Is the DC... Of is it what's the DC for using high hold? Fifteen, no thirteen. Okay, because you because you just assumed for her she wouldn't want to use anything else. She has high hold. I just I just oh, checked yeah. on recall knowledge. Uh, with that roll, let me check. Uh, yeah. hit it right. I think it was Let's see here. Plus. I think so too. The high hold lore. She's plus three. Mm-hmm. 
No, I would have missed. So she rolled a... Oh, she would have still gotten only a 12? Yeah, it would have okay. been a 12. Yeah, it would have right. missed by one still, yep. Okay. I will use High Home Lore as well, though. Okay. Uh, High Home Lore... Maybe. I clicked it. Doesn't on me. It shouldn't okay. matter, but... Hey, Jamie, on your character nope. sheet, under where High Helm Your... is, under the lores, if you would just add the word lore after High Helm... Uh... Oh, it's two... Or it's one word. I wonder if that's why. Hang on, let me see where... It, that Which would, tab that, that would be in Because it's looking for the slug high yep. on Lord. Okay. Fuck. Which tab you that also would that cannot there? follow the receipts. <laughs> um, on your character sheet, it looks like oh, a God. hand. Yeah, you just want to change there. the name of High Helm Lore to like no space between High and Helm, and then add, add the word Lore, L O R E, as a second word. Okay, because it says High Helm and it's spaced out, so I just need to put Lore behind it. Put Here, Lore I'll behind it, it and take out the I'll space. I'll fix it real quick. Yeah, like, I lore am... skills are like lore. they require like really specific okay. slugs to work. Really? I fixed okay. It. Okay, I see it. Thank you. Go. Yep. All right, Baldrin, Moonbeard. Okay, okay Have. Hey. Save us, Baldrin. Hey. <laughs> hey, so this is just how my character kind of works sometimes. So like, I have access to this bookkeeping, and I'm looking at all these numbers and stuff, and then I start thinking about like. If I fudge some of these numbers, can I take some money out of the till stuff? Like that's how my mind okay. kind of works. Okay. Like that's how my mind kind of works sometimes. So I will let you roll um, thievery, thievery like or underworld lore because you have underworld lore. I will let you roll thievery or underworld lore. You're not deceiving anybody. You're trying to like cover your tracks. Yeah. So sometimes okay, I, think my character... thinking, I think he was thinking about like cooking the books against the little lady. I think that's why he was thinking right. I understand, um, but deception you know kind you're of targets. That, you're seeing that as as like thievery for like uh, just forgery almost. Basically, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I want to use underworld lore. How do I do that? You go to your skills sheet and roll underworld underworld lore. Okay. And I'll just kind of use one of these other lures as a guideline for the DC. Probably DC 13. Kill underworld lore. The, the party sheet helper module, by the way, Have, lets you mm -hmm. as the GM. I think it looks like it would let us do it too, but really it's your domain. Let lets you go to like recall knowledge, uh -oh. click underworld lore, put in whatever DC I want, and then just spit out a chat card. Gotcha. Nope. Yeah, that's a failure. So now we got to decide consequences for this. <laughs> um, so first of all, you definitely didn't successfully cook any books. Okay. I, it's, it's not a critical failure, so I don't think you're caught. Uh, but you definitely didn't get away with any money. And you actually, because, because nobody succeeded on this, you actually missed a little bit of information. Uh, so that's punishment in and of itself, I think. Uh, so I think we'll leave it there. No legal reper repercussions. You just don't get any gold, and uh, because it wasn't a critical failure, you're not going to have any, like, you, you, don't, you don't think that she's going to catch on to you. Okay. But nobody do, nobody knows that I didn't do it right, right? I mean, they know that you didn't successfully perform the task of administrative duties. But they didn't do it either, so they don't know that it was like... Yeah, they don't know that you were doing something other than what you appeared to be doing. Okay. Because I was going to let them figure that out on a critical failure. If if you critical failed, she was going to, like, fucking call the guards. Right. I think Paul okay. is asking about the fellow PCs, too. That's up to you. If you want to tell them you were up to it, you can. But I think no. just by observing it, they wouldn't necessarily know. I wouldn't have no. noticed, period. No, because that's just, you know, every now and then, like, I'm going to play my character like that. Just, you know, just. Sure. Has a little shadiness that he can't get rid of. There's something actually really funny and appropriate to your character had you had you succeeded on that check. Anyway. Um, so at the end of the workday is almost here. I'm going to dance time another hour here. Let us, let us work OT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the workday is almost over when you hear a tremendous crash echoing from what sounds like several blocks away. Mm-hmm. Within minutes, a local crier jogs by ringing a bell, warning of escaped animals, and announcing a bounty. Elga flags down the crier for details. <clears throat> so, <sighs> pyre ferrets, exclaims the messenger, oh, taking a ferrets? moment to catch her breath. Pyre ferrets. Yeah. Here. Uh, let me just narrate it. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. There you go. Pyre ferrets, uh, taking a moment to catch your breath. Convoy was coming through from the plane of fire, but traffic got muddled at customs and caused a collision. <laughs> they broke a broke open a crate of fire parrots until they all scattered. Elga spits. What's the worst thing a gaggle of phoenix weasels is going to do? The messenger responds flatly. Wild caught. A stream of pirate curses spill out of Elga's mouth before the messenger adds. Authorities posted an immediate bounty. Two gold ahead alive, one for gold for each dead. You can imagine they want this done fast. Offering a dipper of water to the messenger, Elga urges, Off with you then, before turning to her assistants. Well, if you're up for wrangling weasels and being local heroes, I can clean up around here. How about it? Hell yeah. I'm just curious what a fire parrot is. Fire, fi- fire, fire parrot? parrot? Not a fire parrot. <laughs> you got tongue tied there, man. That's what you said the yeah. second time you said it. <laughs> Oh, did it's I? Yeah. It's all right, man. That's easy, dude. It's like what a, a little, 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 little pirate has on their shoulder, except he's on fire. Yeah, exactly, right? Do you want to? Do you want to ask her about him? I mean, you don't have to just run off. You can ask questions and shit. I, would would be no, since she. You're not from the plane of fire, and you don't deal in animals, so there's no particular reason you would know. I. Uh, you can roll a recall knowledge, but. I, yeah. I, I sent you recall knowledge because I want to. I just want to know if I already know what a what a pyre ferret is if it's if it's uh you know natural my nature knowledge might help otherwise you know mm-hmm. whatever i just yeah there you go uh, i think the only thing you really know about them is that they are um essentially ferrets from the elemental plane of fire they're mustelids and a little ferret family from the elemental plane of fire you you think that they could be a fire hazard um they were in Burn Town. How much fire can they actually okay. cause? Well, you could ask Elga. Yeah, let me let me ask. Look, let me just ask her. Uh, um, what uh, we're in Burn Town, where fire elementals, you know, and and fire exist. What what damage could they cause? Well, if they were, uh, <clears throat> well, if they were the domesticated. Pyre ferrets would be no problem at all. The, we've been we've bred them for a couple thousand years, and they're they're bred to glow and maybe spark. Uh, wild caught fire uh, pyre ferrets blah, 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 are <laughs> wiggly time bombs and tightly controlled. Burn town's hot enough without some spark stoat starting fires. They spark stoat. Yep. Nicely done, sir. <laughs> would uh the cats not be helpful here um how do I put this um pyre ferrets uh think of a weasel that explode when they get nervous or excited do you really want to have oh God, a I predator can't... like a cat chasing it around? Are we any different? Hopefully you're trying to catch it, not to kill it. I mean, you could try to kill it, I suppose. But, um, yeah. Uh, so, said, what you're going to... Go, go ahead. You said the bounty is double alive. So we should try to... That's a good reason for that. Uh, if they get excited, like say you were trying to kill them, and you say you unsuccessfully did so with a single hit, they would likely explode and cause lots of damage, uh, structural and civilian. Fair enough. Do we know anything about them that could cause them to... What do they like? Oh, well, um... The wild ones are 
pretty squirrely and skittish. Uh, so they've likely scattered and are looking for burrows and places to hide. Um, be ready to snag them or trap them or lure them into something that won't burn. Um, she's, she pulls up, she digs around in a big pile of junk, and she digs out like a, what looks like a slightly dented metal bird cage, uh, about 20 feet of chain, and what looks like a, a butterfly net made with a steel mesh instead of like rope mesh. And she's like, maybe, maybe these will help. And she starts just kind of tossing them to you. Uh, these were made for uh, snagging crabs and uh, a few other things like that. But uh, eh, you'll figure it out. Uh, best of best of luck to you. Uh, when you finish, come back and we'll 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 settle up for the day. Do we know how many exactly escaped? Like the number? Uh, uh this yeah. broke crate. I don't know how many crate hold. Yes. Um. Um. Bye. Four. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Let's, uh, let us go find these. Uh, follow this noise. Find the ferrets and capture them alive. Yes. Okay. So, she, uh, Elga tells you to go to the um, Iron Lagoon. That's where they, they're bringing in the, the goods. That's where the kind of starting point where the ferrets would have escaped. Okay. Iron Lagoon. So we're all heading there? Yes. You want to? Yeah. Does yeah. I'm just gonna, yeah. Where that is? I'm just going to leave you in this initiative order because we can use that for for this too. Uh, it's not on. It's not on the map. Um, in particular, it, it's uh, somewhere like around in here, probably because that's where the elemental gate is. I think. Um, oh, there is on there. Number fourteen is Iron Lagoon. So yeah, it's right here. Okay. Doesn't look very lagoony. Hey, hey. <laughs> yep. Just I, I, I just I just specifically want to call out that if we see these things from far enough away that we could that I can like pre-buff and know that I'm going right into an encounter, I would. If okay. if if, there, if not, I don't care. Just just letting you know I would if I could. Sure. Um, so yeah, we had we, we're looking for these. Well, affairs, I mean correct? let me ask you this. Is your goal to capture or kill? Because that's gonna change Capture. It's it just yeah, it's cool. it, my pre-buffing would be casting a spell that makes me more accurate so I could try to offset the uh, uh gotcha. offset the penalty you take for doing non lethal. Um, it's per, I, you'll be able to you'll be able to do this. I mean, I know you don't know what's going behind the scenes right now. You'll be able to do this entirely with skills. Oh, okay. I thought I was going to have to like, non lethally great act some dudes. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Sorry. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to kill them, you can use attack rolls. But if you don't want to kill them, you can you can do it. This is the basically further skill challenge stuff. Yeah, dude. My brain just locked in like. Oh, it's fine. We just have to do it non-lethally if we don't want to blow up and get paid more. I didn't realize we could, it was, this was going to be skills. That's awesome. Um, by the way, I just want to mention, expertly moderated with that whole workday victory points thing. I, I really Shit. like... It really felt like it did a great job blending... Uh, great. Exa I, I like victory points when they're done like that. It's so such a good display of how Pathfinder can blend mechanics with story. And, uh, and you did an amazing job jamming it. I'm having yep, such fun. All right. So I'm you ready. show up at the Iron Lagoon, and there's basically just people running everywhere. <laughs> uh, some are running away. Some are trying to look like they're trying to look under boxes, and they're you know turning over trash cans. Um, they're doing anything they can think of where these things might be. Uh, so the first step of this thing is trying to figure out where the hell they went. Uh, so it's like basically a tracking challenge called Ashen Tracks. Um, as elemental infused animals, pyre ferrets. I was trying to open my character sheet from up there, and I double clicked it and did the skip turn. Oh, why well, hit reset initiative? Here, let me just. <laughs> yeah, just do that. Do the thing. <laughs> Let's just reroll. Okay. Just reroll your initiative. I messed it up. You messed it up, and then I messed it up, and now it's just messed up. So. <laughs> Click on your portraits, guys, to re-roll your initiative. Your portraits at the top of the screen there. 
Oops, I hit the wrong button. Hopefully Damn the it. fact that I lost a 19 Sorry. to get a 10 isn't gonna suck, but, I mean, oh, it could be worse, I could have done that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna advance this to the next, top of the next round. Okay, so, as elemental-infused animals, pyroferrets leave slight magical signatures along with their conventional tracks. Um, so there's a couple of ways you could track these guys. Um, you can use any of these skills to try to find where these ferrets went. And I have this in encounter mode, but it doesn't mean that Jamie has to make this roll. All right, there's really no... Actually, you know what? I'm just in, in the encounter. There's actually no reason for us to even be in encounter mode for this right now. Okay. So, anybody can do this. Oh, okay. I'm um, using the encounter for round tracking, like, influence round, or, like, the big... No, I don't, I don't have to do that for this, I don't think. Um, um, we're just going to pick one that. of these to roll. So, who, who wants to try to track the ferrets? Anybody want to go first to try to track the par ferrets? I, I, would I will. I would volunteer... Just because I'm the only one of us that's trained in survival, which is the skill you track with. Okay. Um, yeah. If you really want to, you can though. No, let's 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 you go first. I'm gonna follow the lead. Um. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to. I like to. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a skilled tracker. Ignok is anyway. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> so uh, he's he's looking around for uh. For for small ferret feet, he doesn't know what a pyre ferret is enough to know if like they're gonna burn the ground underneath him, if it's singed ground, or if it's just feet. But he's just looking. He's looking for footprints. I wish they had given me a picture of a fire a pyre ferret, but they didn't. Ooh, almost crit. Okay, so yeah, you you have you can track three of the four. You know where three of them went. Hmm. Uh, one ran into the botanical gardens. Ooh. One ran into a lizard hatchery, and one ran into a tap house. Hey, what? The, you said lagoon, right? The Iron is Lagoon. That, is that on the map? Number fourteen. Oh, okay. It's not labeled on. I got you. It's not no. Labeled as Iron Lagoon. Uh, no. I mean, there's a key at the top left, but if you zoom out far yeah, enough, yeah. but. Um, there. It's just. Using, putting it in my notes. Cool. Um, so, botanical gardens, lizard hatchery, and tap house. And you can tackle those in any order you want. Or you can split up and do them all at the same time. No, I think we split should up? stick together on this one so we have more people to actually grab them. Works for me. Yeah. So we're not we're not supposed to be like trying to make another roll to like to figure out where the fourth one went um you see no tracks for the fourth one as of, as of right now oh okay duh this is just the only follow-ups we have right now yep um oh, okay so it's botanical gardens lizard hatchery and tap house that's it let's go to the tap house and uh before uh, one of these ferrets <laughs> gets drunk <laughs> Okay. The tap right. house it is. Alright, so panicked by street traffic, one ferret bolted into a tavern. Patrons in the establishment are busy raising their mugs rather than washing their feet. Alright, Have, when we go into the tavern, there's an entrance. Do I see a back door? Uh, there's probably a couple entrances as well as a back door. And you track it, you can actually, you catch glimpses of the ferret kind of darting around in between people's feet. Uh, so it looks exactly like you would expect it to be, a, a basically lava-colored glowing weasel-looking thing, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's darting around people's feet. It looks nervous a little bit because people aren't really watching where they're putting their feet. They're not really paying attention. Um, they're, dr they're getting drunk. And so it, it's, it's an untenable situation. The crowd doesn't seem to know that there's a pyre ferret amongst them right now. Basically, is what I'm saying. Should try to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to cause alarm, right? We don't want to cause a panic because then the thing's gonna freak. 
and start burning shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Ignok says, uh, let's try to find this without stirring up a panic. Or, let's try to catch it without stirring up a panic, because we can see it, you said. Uh, so what does that look like? Trying to catch yeah, it without... Since I'm the smallest, would I be able to move in the within the crowd more efficiently? Ooh. That's good thinking. It depends on how you want to you kind of sneak through the crowd. You're trying to, like, stealth. Well, I wouldn't say more, I, I mean, I wouldn't say like a panic, you know, run either, but just, you know, I'm closer to the ground, so I would be able to utilize the spaces. But right. That's just my thinking. Um, sure. I mean, this is a skill challenge, so what, what skill would you think of trying to use for that? Uh, I could see stealth, I could see acrobatics. Um, I mean, any others that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head? I, I know, the stealth would probably be well, I don't know. If athletics got plus seven. He said he said acrobatics or stealth. And you don't have oh acrobatics, acrobatics. but you do yeah. have stealth. I got a plus one, but stealth stealth probably would be it's plus four to my stealth. So yeah, we, let's okay. do that. Yeah, one. you try to you try to sneak through the crowd and try to corral the fair a little bit. Yeah. yeah maybe uh, okay. Maybe uh. Maybe like a plus one circumstance bonus or something because she's small. She was saying like because she's small, she feels like she could like have a. Be better at not panicking the crowd than uh, the rest of us. I, instead of giving her a circumstance bonus, I'm just going to reduce the DC by one and do this. Very cool. I was just picturing it, and I'm like, well, since I'm only like two to three feet. Sure. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's really creative. I want to. I want to okay. applaud you on on your creativity, Jeremy. Yay. Yeah. Because this, I, I mean, stealth is not one of the recommend. Like, that gives me some like recommended skills to try it, but it also says, "Hey, reward creativity." If they come up with something else, go for it. So yeah, I'm totally fine with stealth. Go for it. Okay. Roll. Right, so let's Roll see. that beautiful bean footage. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there. Can I can I nominate Paul for a hero point? Because uh... in some in all future combats to come. He's going to be giving me plus one status bonus to attack rolls. Really <laughs> Go for it. Take a hero point. Did my roll come through? It did. Uh, yeah, that's a success. That's a fifteen. Uh, so yeah, you you you've you've kind of you've kind of corralled it back to like one side, kind of one corner of the tavern, uh, without alerting it. Well, without alerting the people, really. Okay. And you haven't you haven't alarmed it yet. Okay. Um, so we need it. We need we need some help. We need somebody else to help help her out. Who's next at lunch? It doesn't matter who's next. Time at once. <laughs> Paul, do you know how to add yourself a hero point? Yeah, I just click on it, right? Yeah, yeah there you, you go. You did it. You can do it from the party sheet or from your character sheet. Um. So. Da -da 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 -da. These things are not. These things are not natural, but it is a weasel and i think either not nature i think survival means i'm pretty good at trapping animals probably in small game so i, I would put those skills to use i think if that's cool sure uh do you want to use like the bird cage that the uh, elga gave you it's probably like captain cat or maybe the bird she gave you a bird cage a net and a chain oh shit i missed that i'm sorry Oh, you're fine. Not when I was taking notes, I must have missed that. Elder, yeah, she gave us a birdcage bird. and a uh, like a a net with a metal. And uh, like a butterfly net with a metal mesh instead of nylon yeah, or whatever. The bird cage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that. She that like, seems, she, we could be she so dug through a junk that. pile. So. So she gave us a birdcage, a butterfly net with a metal mesh, and then was there a third thing you said? Uh, it's a twenty foot length of chain. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would want to go subtle here, and the birdcage would be the subtle option of that. So yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, so bust out you bust out the birdcage. You try to kind of trap it in there. Sure. Uh, let me let me get used to getting these checks set out here. Uh, survival. Cool. Oh by one. <laughs> oh man, I should have asked somebody to aid me. Damn it. You know, you know, I'm gonna give you a hero point, man. You've done you've done good work. You've done good shit today. We're getting right. close to the end. I appreciate it. I mean, that I can use. You don't have to use it here if you don't. You can use it here if you want. You don't have to. If I can, I will. Because yeah, I want to. I want to. Oh, yeah. I want to succeed this. If you know, if I can. Sweet. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you 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 corral them and you got the, the little 
pirate ferret in the little bird cage. Once you come, kind of come up with it, and you you have it, everybody around you is like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like they had no idea what could have happened. <clears throat> so that's one ferret down. Yeah, guys, we've got to get to the botanical botanical gardens. There's not going to be any garden left. That is a good point. <laughs> yeah. This thing's going to be eating lizards, pardon. <laughs> Gardens. Ah, uh, that's uh. very good point, Baldur. Let, uh, let us go. All right, so the Phyrexian Botanical Garden. Let me just put this. I guess there I'll you put, go. Put that cage For... in my belt or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, or you could probably you could just drop it off. Because all these places are right near the Iron Lagoon. You could just drop it back over there where the, where the wagons are if you wanted to. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, sure. The Phyrexian Botan Botanical Garden houses myriad sunless flora that feed on meat, heat, and most worryingly, charcoal. Uh, one set of tracks disappears amid the grassy growths and tree-sized fungi, causing bits of charcoal dust to spark in its wake. So, uh, right. okay, cool. Um, I, I've got to... Guys, I, I've got a pretty good idea for this one, okay? So, I have a little bit of magic that I want to try to use, and then we can throw the net. Okay? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, say, say when, then. Okay, so... Is, there, is, any, is it... Who is good with net? Uh, is that a physical know. thing? <laughs> Could be. Could be athletics. Could be a uh, ranged attack. Could be survival. Try still kind of trapping. Lots of ways you could do it. Could be stealth, sneaking up on it and catching it in the net. Okay. Could be nature, we okay. weaving your way through the botanical gardens. I don't know. Lots, lots of things you could do. Uh, so what kind of magic will you use, Baldur? Okay, so... I. I I have this I have this ability, the magic ability. It, it's called lose the path. Because what it does is it surrounds a moving creature with lifelike illusions, and it shifts their perception, and it makes the terrain very difficult for them to move around on. And then we can throw the net on it because it can't move. This is this is a wonderful idea. Say. So each each of these ferrets requires two successful checks to capture. Using that first level spell to do that, I'm giving you one successful automatic check. Aye. Okay. So somebody else will have to help with the second part of the capture. Okay. I think I think it should be uh, I think it should be Jeff. We haven't seen Jeff help capture a ferret yet. Yeah. I know Slagger. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> hey, know, like, he's, uh, like, hey, he's like, let's do our thing. I still We're have on. to actually cast it because it could save, right? Um, he, um, it doesn't give me stats for it, but this is kind of you know fictionalized. Um, if you if you you're expending the spell slot, you're expending a resource for. It, I'm just giving you an automatic success on the skill check. And these and these sort of out of com and sort of these these sort of scenarios, Paul. He, you know, he can either just give you a success on it because of a cool creative use of a spell. Or if you want to use a spell in a, like, maybe it'll help you, but maybe not quite free success helpful, then he could have you roll, like, an occultism check for your spell cast or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great that's a great idea for you to lose the path that way. So Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, reward creativity. Yeah, so what All right, yeah, Giller, what how are you going to capture it? Uh, well, you know, the only thing I'm really good at is, like, athletics, so probably that. You want athletics? Yeah, All right. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Oh, I won again! Fudge. No. All right. Hey, could I? You definitely is, cast guidance on him when he tried this, that, right? Oh uh, man, that's what I was getting ready to say. Was like, is this a situation where? Yeah, this is a situation where I could go like, all right, go now, and I like give him the guidance yeah, right at yeah. the time, right? Sure, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I appreciate the uh, allowing me to do it post posthumously, or whatever. But uh, um, so, ha <laughs> ha. There you go. So I, I gave you the guidance, and, and just click it off. It'll give you the immunity. Um, so, by the guidance of Agrod, Angarod. Yes. 
you you capture with the way you you just grab it. You use the net. What do you do? You just run up on it and snag it. I think I'd probably use a net. Okay. Well, it would burn you, right? If it gets too excitable, yeah, it'll slow. Yeah. So, so instead of using like a range throw of the net, I just kind of jump out from the corner or something and up. snag it. Yeah. Okay. Do like a, you do like a wrestling shoot, you know, like a yeah. like a, <laughs> like a um, jujitsu sh- shoot. It would take down. Um, yeah, I, I, I say, get her, stoke the flames, and give you the guidance, and then, you know, as you're about to do it. Okay. What's interesting about this in, this uh, series of encounters here, it calls out a crit fail, um, causes the ferrets to go to a mild combustion, and now you got to worry about firefighting while you're trying to capture it. <laughs> wow. Great. So, so like, thankfully, nobody's crit failed yet. All right, so you caught two ferrets. The third one you tracked was in the lizard hatchery. Great. Yeah, yeah. Let's just go to the hatchery. Well, the hatchery is run by a halfling who is uh, standing outside the hatchery right now, kind of, oh, what's going on? Freaking out a little bit. Uh, he raises these little cat tail, cat-sized lizards called spur tails um, that are known for their nutritious eggs and love of steam, and some people like to keep them as pets. Um, a pyre ferret disappeared into the main hatchery, and you hear a hissing chorus of distressed lizards. And some of the lizards are kind of scrambling out of the out of the uh, hatchery as well. Right. Right. So you know it's somewhere in the hatchery, but you're not sure where. The hatchery is filled with like clouds of steam. It's kind of hard to see. Um, there are. Um, there's the livestock, there's these humidi- humidifying troughs, there's the machinery that's causing all the steam. Um, it's pretty hard to see in here, and there's lizards underfoot that you don't want to step on because, you know, they, they didn't do anything. Um, do we have any way to feed it? Like, it might come out for food. I mean, do you know what pyrophores want to eat? You can roll a nature check. Um... Well, I, I got an idea here. Like, what? Um, My nature's terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> what, what about what about this, Have And you, you, the answer may be still no, because diplomacy doesn't usually work on animals or elementals or whatever the shit this is. But um, if I successfully aid Baldrin with me using the nature skill, uh, could he then maybe use diplomacy to lure it with like the type of food that would actually entice it or whatever I mean I think that would be an animal handling thing wouldn't it more than a diplomacy yeah yeah is animal is animal handling a nature action yeah I I, I'm trying to find wait a minute is animal I just searched animal handling I just didn't find anything Um, I think that comes under is it under survival how to handle? I think it's under survival. Yeah, I'll take to a second. I'm looking up a uh, sense direction cover tracks. No, um, command an animal is under nature. Nature? I call it. I would. I would allow either nature or survival for it. Okay. I, I'm, for this I'm, usage. Trying, I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to like hog spotlight. But my character's like so much better at nature and survival and everything. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm. I'm good. I mean, I'm plus two better at perception than anyone else, too, because cleric wisdom. So, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, mm-hmm. I want us to succeed, so I'm trying to be like, cool, I'll do this right. thing, but I also don't want to be a spotlight hawk. Can I get an assist from someone in a cool way, maybe? Because, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use I'm gonna use nature here to try and see if I can command the ferret in a, with the right hand gestures or what have you to, like, get it to come out where we can catch it. So would you require small assistance or big? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll assist you in whatever way, like, if I can. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to get, like, if, if you're going to assist, you just have to kind of, like, say, tell the GM, like, you want to assist in this way. And if there's, like, a relevant skill, you can do it. You know what I mean? Um, and it's, you know, it's very, it's very much up to the GM whether or not they work. Like, Paul, you could, 
you could say like, hey, can I use um, diplomacy, intimidation, or performance to like take some method of encouraging words that's like encouraging Ignok like as he does. Well, thing we're, so other. we're we're in this but hatchery and there's lots of steam, right? Mm -hmm. So like, where's the where's all the water contraptions? There's basically troughs, troughs of water. Okay, so I can use intimidation and like, like with a bucket of water, like you know, because I'm sure this thing doesn't want to have water thrown on it. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Go for it. Right. Yeah, you you want to roll? You want to aid him with intimidation? Or you're trying to, or you trying to help capture it with intimidation? Are you trying to aid his role, or are you trying to do your own role? Let's. We. I mean, we need two successes, right? You do. Yeah. So so let's have you do intimidation on your own for that, and then I'll do nature on. Yeah, so like I'll, you know, I go in all like gun ho, and then you're like, no, no, man, I like, let, let's try it this way. But then I'm, you know, there's an intimidation check. Yep. Oh, the 18 was there, but then it rolled over. <clears throat> Hero yeah, that's point. a failure. Hero yeah. point. <laughs> you that's have it. one. Yep, let's do it. Oh. Yeah, just right click and re roll yep. using hero point. Bro, again. No, no, no. Yeah, Paul, if you okay. you don't actually well, want to manually take away your hero point, you just want to right click the chat card and say reroll using a hero okay. point, and it will actually consume the hero point for you. Okay. Um. Okay. So what happens when he when he does when intimidations there? What do you do? You try to, okay. you try to dump. Water so he's trying to like to try to threaten it with water. That's what he could basically what he was doing. Uh. So yeah, I think I think. It kind of comes out of where it was hiding, as it's like it's trying to move to a different hiding spot. Like you kind of scared it out of its spot a little bit, and it's on the root. It's on the move. It's visible where you can see it. You're kind of running low among along the steam. Okay, so I was setting up to do my nature thing, right? When I see him do that, he ruins it, and I say, <laughs> well, it, it, "I can tell that now. It, I can tell that now. Its mind is just on finding a new place to hide." And I'm not going to be able to entice it with nature anymore. Uh, I'm like, Baldrin, damn it. And then I look over and I say, Bean, grab it quickly. I'm trying to encourage Bean to just roll out, you know, maybe athletics or whatever. To I'll to say do Dive it. on it. Yeah. Yeah, Bean, just dive on it. Okay, let me see. So yeah. I will dive yeah. on it using my We're athletics. Trash there you go. There's an athletic check for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on. The point? high humidity would probably keep fire from being too dangerous in here, actually. All right, let me roll. It's on. It's in the chat there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. There you go. Nice. Yeah. So oh, you that's you a critical you, success. You you snag it, no problem. Yeah. Come here, little shit. <laughs> so uh, the halfling kind of calms down when he sees you coming out, carrying, um, this this pyre ferret. And uh, you hear a scream from down the street. Uh oh! Sounds like well, the fourth. Yes, we found the fourth one. Yeah. Take off running towards the scream. Okay, so you you come around a corner and you see a trail of burning footprints. Along the along the the the, the flagstones, uh, head, head to the gunpowder, leading into an alchemist shop. Shite. Yeah, it's about as bad. Leading into an alchemy. Leading into an alchemist shop, and as you as you come around the corner, you see smoke beginning to billow out of the windows of the alchemist shop. Oh shite! Hey, oh, start start trying up. to yell and scream. People, move out, move back, run. Like, you know, I'm trying to save people, not the shop. At this point, I mean, the shop is not engulfed in flames yet. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going. You, you think you could? You think you could? We're, essentially, there's there's two things that have to be that can be done here. Don't have to be done here. Than, you know, with RPG, uh, putting out the fire is one, and capturing the ferret is another. 
Imagine not realizing that you should have prepared create water with one of your two spell slots. So, okay. So, we are going to go into an initiative order for this, I think, because there's a time limit now. Um, yeah. So, let me... We still have we still haven't used our chain, have we? No. Nope. I don't know if it's gonna come in clutch or not, but see. Oh, wish I would have nice. said that twenty for uh, <laughs> not an initiative roll, but you know, hey. Jamie, roll this for me. I I did. I rolled a nineteen. Mm, no, that was Jeff. What? <laughs> and then his dice rolled, so uh, yeah. it's just spinning. I mean, I can roll it for you here. Yeah, because mine's just spinning. What's going on? Okay. Hi, last again. All right, so we're in phase one. Yeah, there's Let's two phases. <laughs> you get two. You get two phases. Essentially, two rounds, two phases before the alchemy shop goes up. So there's fire. You know, there's two options. You can work on fighting the fire. Or you can work on capturing the ferret. Um. Or you can stand back and watch it burn. I mean, that's an option too. I, think, I, think, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think Ignok. Um. As long as he doesn't think, uh, he he doesn't think if the does he think the fire might kill someone here? Like, is there anybody in the building he thinks the fire will kill? Besides I don't us? think there's anybody in the building right now. I think the, the person you see screaming outside the building was the owner. Oh, okay. So, yeah. 100%. He likes the fire. Like, he... Nah. Ignok is like... As long as Ignok doesn't think somebody's just gonna die, like an innocent person's gonna die, he would... If there's a fire, he's never he's trying to put it out it. unless unless he thinks... He's going to be saving like an innocent life or whatever by doing it. He's like I mean, you. You would be saving the alchemist stock. Yeah, right. He doesn't care about that but, at all. Yeah. Like, he, yeah. like I, all I see in these flames is the glory of England. <laughs> so, uh, so it. I would just go for the ferret. Okay. It's not that I don't care about the alchemist shop. It's just you know I worship a god sure. living flame basically. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to catch the ferret. Are we aware of where it is? Uh, uh, it is it is running wild through the shop. Uh, it is it is clearly already agitated. It hasn't exploded yet, but it's, it's brighter yeah. and hotter than the other ferrets. Okay, I mean, it, like, if you think it's justified, I would roll survival. Otherwise, athletics. Uh, I think survival is fine. Um, you're trying to trying to basically. Use the the your knowledge of the 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 way animals work to try to try to capture it. Yeah, I think survival's fine. Um, yeah, let me... you know, you're, you're track, you're like you're hunting something or whatever, and it's agitated. And you're trying to uh, not get it to. You're trying to <coughs> guess which way it's going to go next. Kind of this is the way I was thinking of it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you you've you've. You've got it kind of narrowed down so it's not running over the whole shop. Each of these requires two successes to stop, basically. Um, so you, you you've got it kind of you got it on the back foot. You got it like it's 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 in a good it's in a good spot for you guys to capture it. Nice. Okay, somebody that's good at athletics, grab it. I was say hope hopefully uh can use athletics, so can use athletics, okay. Yeah. And I'll yeah, stay out yeah. Here. I think with I think with my survival success, I think I saw the. I, th I think I I think I intuited the direction that it was going to run next, and cut off that path. Um, to uh, I think I intuited the direction it was going to run next, yes. and I cut off that path so it would cut back towards you guys to create an opportunity for it looks like Giller to uh, catch. Him. So you snag the ferret. Are you just grabbing it, or are you using something to catch it? Oh shit! I mean, all, I mean, do we, do we, do we still, still have, have the net? Yeah, I guess we would still have the net, right? 
It's yeah, I mean, you could probably yeah. drop the ferret off. Yeah. It's not like yeah. the, it's not like the cage. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a trick question. I was just asking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you you've got the ferret. Uh, I assume you 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 move the ferret out of the shop. Yes. Okay. Ferret's captured. Shop's still on fire. End your turn, Giller. Yeah, once Ignok is like, once it's clear that we caught the ferret we were supposed to, he's just outside, I think, just like standing, staring at the building, like just watching it burn and praying. Oh. I mean... And if you say, I just get the fuck out, that's a completely valid answer. You don't have to try to put the fire out, fire out, but you can try to put the fire out. Out of character, we should definitely try to put this fire out because the alchemist is going to be like, "Oh, thanks for saving my shop. Here's a potion." <laughs> but uh, is, my character is, is, is just like, an idiot like who's just watching the fires? fire break. Yeah, is it like little fires where the ferret was? It's a series of small fires. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, but man, like you're not messing with no. I mean, <laughs> there's probably some super highly flammable shit in there. Uh, whose turn is it? Mine. Yours. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you and Baldrin, right? It's next, yeah. Like everybody goes once. Is that what we're dealing with there? Everybody goes once, and that's the end of phase one. Yeah. I, I'm not sure at this point what I would. Let's see. You, usually, I can tell you from. Kingmaker, when we had they had an opportunity to put out fires, it was set up to where like you could use athletics, acrobatics, those kind of skills to like help put out the fire. It wasn't like uh, the suggested skills are athletics, crafting, medicine, nature, and survival. Uh, but if you have a clever use for something else, I'm down for it. Sorry, friends, I'm good at nature, survival, and athletics, but I ain't helping <laughs> on this fire. I was say my highest is athletic, so I would think I would probably just try to use that for now. All right, let okay. me. But okay, so you have begun putting the fire out. You got some of the smaller fires out. There's still some fires going on. Okay. In your turn, and we'll see if Baldrin can bring it home. Oh God. Okay. So. Um... Hey, what if I just like, um, I don't know, like mad dash frantically try to use acrobatics and get in there and I don't, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm like Baldrin is like, fuck this. I'm scared. This is stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, so you try to what, like smother the fires by jumping all over the, like dumping stuff on them or something. What are you, what are you thinking? I mean, I, I, Basically, if she would have failed, I would have stayed out here and let it burn. <laughs> but since she succeeded, um, I guess, I mean... I didn't have a backup plan for that. Yep, didn't have a backup plan for that. So, I mean, I, I guess I'm just going to use my athletics. It's not great, but... Okay. It's really the only thing that makes sense. Still on fire. <laughs> Fail boat. Okay, end your turn there. Damn it. In Dwarven. <laughs> oh, All right. Shit. Fire Lord, he ain't doing the, uh, the The alchemist shop is still on fire. And Baldrin and uh, Bean are inside. Fire resistant. Go out there and blow on them. I knew I should have stayed out of that. Shit. I. Uh... Is... Well, Ignox, we're... Ignox is playing for frames. I know we're. I know we're in. Um, initiative order, but this isn't like six second rounds, right? No. Okay. Um. So. What Ignok does is when he sees Bean and Baldrin like making an effort to like actually fight the fire, um, he kind of shakes. He kind of shakes himself out of like just praying and watching the fire, 
because you know there is new allies and you know he likes them so he doesn't want them to die in a fire he's not going to help put out the yeah. fire um but uh does, does giller is giller like does he look like he's moving to like help firefight yes okay anybody who looks like they're moving to firefight or has already been firefighting uh ignok turns his prayers and he says Ingrad creates fire, but that doesn't mean he can't also bring water when it's helpful. And uh, he and I cast uh, Rousing Splash. I just go one, I just go one by one by one and cast Rousing Splash on the three of them. Like it just takes you know ten seconds or whatever. And I just uh, uh, I I do incantations. Uh, and uh like water just kind of like appears above their heads just like a splash of cold magical water splashes on their head so it reinvigorates them gives them a little bit of vigor yeah. which is temp hp all right well we'll we'll roll the temp hp if we need to if they take if they end up taking any damage we'll roll the temp hp first yeah i'm just doing it we may like, yeah it, well, yeah sure uh, I, I it could it, be helpful there's that there's uh, actually mechanically there's that there's actually a spell effect here let me see how does this work yeah, if they drop this spell effect on themselves, it actually rolls the temp HP and applies it. Oh, yeah, go ahead and do it. Nice. Um, I'm taking it back off myself because I didn't actually cast it on myself. Okay, so you end your turn? Oh, yep. Yeah, I was just doing it for roleplay, really. I didn't actually. I was like, eh, fuck it. it, it I mean, maybe they'll take if, a couple fire damage. It'll help. We'll see what happens here. Um, all right, Gil, are you running in? Putting fire, help putting fire out? I don't know, I'm running away. Yes. Okay. What are you going to do? Uh, we'll run away. Are there, are there like blankets anywhere? Um, you could improvise like a smothering tool. Yeah. Try and do design. that. You want to do that with athletics, like you're beating the fire out? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a shame. Ugh. Oh, well. Bean. You try. All right, let me try my athletics again. It's a group effort. Yeah. Uh, let me see if that'll help get me some more fires out. Oh, no. Nope. You, you, you yeah. fires are still burning. Damn. Oh, God. Hit your next uh, intern there, Bean. All right, is it getting worse, Have? Um, not yet. It's about the same. All right. Uh, damn it. All right. Well, same thing, I guess. Athletics. So now there's, so now there's three of us in here. Yep. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Ignok is like that little girl with the burning house meme. She's, <laughs> yeah. just, she's, just, she's just standing there watching it burn. <laughs> so it's about the same, so I don't feel like it's about ready to go up, right? Um, I mean, the whole place is not getting ready to explode, but there are definitely some, like, you know, alchemist bottles that are in danger of getting exposed to flame. If your answer is "fuck it, I'm out," that's fine. You don't have to stay and fight. Um, I'm going to, Have I'm going to use. Um, I'm actually gonna Have I'm actually gonna use thievery, and not steal, but like pick up the the vials and the containers and get them the hell out. All right, so you're trying to get some stuff out. Yeah, I can I can see thievery working for that. Uh, let me get you a check for it real quick. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So with the you, you very quickly remove the most volatile and things that are closest to the fires, and the 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 shelves are mostly made of metal, and it, it's clear that the danger is past at this point. The fires are not out out, but they're smoldering and. There's no danger of an imminent explosion. All right. 
that ends that. So just so you know, if you would, if the if anybody that was still in the building at the end of this round after Baldrin here was going to take uh, basic reflex save or take piercing and fire damage as things started to explode. Ah. Oh. And then the next, then the next round, if you, if if everybody went through again, round three, and everybody failed, the whole shop goes up in unstoppable flames, and you take a a, a little bit of extra fire damage as you, as you just run out if you can't do shit anymore. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we saved it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. Ish. All right. Let me think here. I got I got total some math and victory points for the aftermath here. Okay. Um. So, you know, you hand off the last pyre ferret. Uh, Elga kind of comes out and she says, uh, well, "You've you've done very impressive work today, lads and and and, and lady. Um, you know, if you're going to uh, you know represent Clan uh, Tolor, we're going to have to uh, dress you in your best. Um, so, who is wearing the heaviest armor right now?" Probably both. I think Ignok and I. I think Giller and Ignok are probably both in breastplate. Yeah. Are they both in breastplate? All right. Yeah, I'm going to be using um, medium armor this campaign. So. Uh, then she's going to gift somebody a set of full plate. Oh, oh I, shit! I I have to wear so. a level two war priest specific <clears throat> feet that they added, but I will be wearing full plate. Okay. Well, she 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 takes your measurements. I would defer it to Jeff, but he just said he's going to wear medium armor this campaign. So. Yeah, I don't. Okay. If I take on Bird and Iron, it won't be till like level six or something. So. Yeah. I have so Elga, fire. Elga takes your measurements and she says, uh, "Come back in a few days, and I'll have it ready for you." Did, does she tell me she's giving me a set of plate? Yeah, she's measuring. She's clearly measuring you for armor. And you ask her what kind of armor, she'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "What thought are you measuring me for?" A nice suit of full plate armor. Oh, ho, ho. a true blessing from the god, and of course um, from you. <laughs> yeah. And and there's there's some more things. Um, she gives uh collectively she pays you five gold for your work. So I had that to the party stash. Um, she. Throws in an item there. I'm going to leave it identified because she'll tell you what it is. I'll put it at the party stash too. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> um, Where's the party stash? It's on the party sheet. Okay. Yeah, it's like a fourth tab over on the party sheet. Yeah, there's a tab called stash on the party sheet. Um, the I'll I'll tell you the last reward you're gonna get in just a minute because she gives it to you the next day. Um, the pyre ferret bounty you kept recaptured all four, so that's another eight gold. Okay. Uh, you prevented the alchemist shot from exploding. Um, so she gives you a few potions that she didn't quite get to finish. Holy shit. Faulty potion of quickness. If it's faulty, at the end of each of the turns, you got to roll a DC3 flat check. If it succeeds, the potion effect persists. That's cool. Uh, for another round, and the flat check's DC increases by one. So it's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. Um, you know. earn two reputation for the combination of doing the work well and capturing the fire... Uh, Fire ferrets. Jesus fuck. Uh, <laughs> two reputation added there. Are you using the party okay. sheet helper I am. thing to track input or reputation? Hopefully, yeah, it's on Hopefully there. it's helping, helping you. We can't see that. Yeah. Now, so, uh, just... you, could, you should be able to see the tap. Hey, there's a setting where you can show the players it, but like it's, it's GM facing by default because it's really just for the GM, you know? I mean... Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't mind if you see it, but it's fine. Hey, you don't really need to see it, so. 
Actually, no. You remember you told me you weren't able to see the influence. I could see it. I just couldn't change it. Oh, hmm. whatever. It's a setting in the party sheet to help a module, I think. But I'll, I'll I'll find it at some point. It's whatever, as long as it's helping you. You're the one who's tracking our rep. So. Um, and so because we we're we're over time, and I want to finish this up real quick. Um, I'm gonna advance time a little more here. Um, let's let's for for my sake presume that you would go to the next day. You go you go back to the inn and you rest. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, the next morning at the inn. Uh, Elga shows up. <clears throat> Badass dwarven war axe. And she... You're not far off. Uh, <laughs> so the crossbow that you guys fixed, she, she's holding it in her hands, and she says, uh, Bella came back and couldn't pay for it, so here you go. That's a plus one striking crossbow. What? Striking? Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I think um, Ignok looks at it, and he says, uh, <laughs> "These are strong weapon runes." He Holy says, cow! Uh, he says, "Sergeant, your weapon just got very strong." We'll You're deal with uh, <laughs> we'll we'll deal with the the fallout of the the loot there, potions, what you're gonna do with the crossbow, yeah. all that shit. Uh, next time I will go ahead and distribute coinage to you. Yeah. I thought there was a button for that. E e there, should there it is. Looks like I a only have arrow 20 gold. I have one with the least amount of gold here. Oh. I know, I have li <laughs> little, I got little pockets. <laughs> and we will end the, end the session there with uh, you guys waking the next morning having just received a very fucking nice gift. From Elga, oh, Paul. I don't. Man. Paul and Jamie don't know this, but that's basically a level four. Yeah, but I, I am probably a level four clip uh, character. So is it? It's a level four. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It it adds an extra die of damage. Damn. That's why I have the runic weapon spell prepared because turning my great axe into a plus one striking weapon at first yeah. level with a spell for ten minutes only or whatever is insanely powerful. To get a permanent striking rune at level one is destructive. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Amazing. you guys got all those uh, victory points by succeeding on everything, so you got the maximum rewards out of it all. Yeah, we, I mean, and, we were rolling hot. So, um, and you got full plate coming. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 uh, that's not a nothing cost item in itself. Um, yeah, I, I looked at it because I, like, I was like, damn, this is like a faulty potion. I was like, how much is a potion of speed or quickness or whatever haste. the thing it's yeah. called the, the haste potion cost in the, the 30 act, the gold regular, each no it's i mean unless i looked wrong it was it was the, the 90 that that one's listed at um, oh i'm thinking scrolls i'm sorry potion of quickness level eight item 90 gold consumable yeah so the the prices it's giving you there are for like the full version of those, I guess, and I probably, if I were you, I'd probably knock it down a little bit for that reason. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you decide to sell them, I'll knock it down some. Okay. Isn't a scroll a lot cheaper than that? Uh, I don't I think thought, so. I thought because you pay for that spell level, right? And it like ten gold per spell level. Oh no, it, it accelerates more than that. Uh, I don't remember paying more for like thirty gold for my haste spells. Because in generally potions, are, in general potions are more expensive because anybody can use them. Uh, the scrolls, right. you, know, yeah, right. you have to roll the things. Yeah, I think I think it's more expensive than a scroll of haste, Jeff. But because of what I just said, you know. Yeah. Okay. You have to That's have right. To I forgot spells to use a scroll. Yep, and that Vadul was a cult, so. Yeah, yeah, he had the psychic. But you know, he's he's not wrong. A level three scroll is thirty gold. That doesn't make any sense at all. Hmm. Well, I mean, based on the limitations you said, there's a chance of failing the scroll usage if you're it's, not a, a it's, cult it's caster, a, right? It's a, it's about sure. item it's about item level. I mean, the potions level eight because anyone could use it. Like, yeah, no, it's right. not even it's not even a chance to fail. You if you don't if you can't cast spells that have a if you can't cast a tradition of spells that has haste on it, you can't use a scroll of haste. Period. Let's oh, okay. Or if you've got item. yeah, trick magic item. Yeah, so. trick magic. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, uh, Josh, I'm going to hop down this other channel real quick because you wanted something before I got to bounce, and then uh, I'll catch you, you guys you know, you uh, later. It's, like, it's just a simple foundry thing. Later, guys. Oh, okay, what's up? Yep, we'll yeah. catch you guys later. Yeah. Later, man. See you, everybody. Good night. night. Um, night. 
very nice rewards. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little uh, flabbergasted at the rewards for that. <laughs> That's crazy. It's, I mean, it's not, you know, that'll be the only striking room we, well, I mean, if I, well, hell if I know, maybe the whole adventure just gives striking rooms that back to back to back. <laughs> But I imagine decent chance that's the only striking room we get pre, you know, level four accessibility or level three or whatever when it gives out one, yada yada. So it, it's just a really that is a very cool reward. I mean, I could tell we were succeeding a lot on checks. I was like, damn, like if there are rewards for like thresholds. I bet we're doing pretty good here. Yeah, um, there was. Okay, so uh, all I was going to ask you is, uh, uh, all. I Ask you. I don't think Jamie knows that she's still on camera. I'm going to disconnect her here. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, it was. I was just going to ask you if you would go into your module settings. It, it, the manage modules, like the ones you have turned on. There's mm -hmm. a module. There's going to be. I, I checked earlier because I can see what active modules are in a game. Mm -hmm. There's a module called. I just had to do this myself. There's a module called Settings Extender. If you uncheck that, like, to turn it off, it doesn't warn you, like, this is the dependency for XYZ, right? Mm-hmm. Am I correct that it didn't give you a warning? I'm getting to it right now. Oh, okay. okay yeah, it did give me a warning. Because if it says, like, this is a dependency for XYZ, you sure you want to turn it off, that means it's being a dependency. But I have no idea why I had it. I think we both have had that installed for who knows how long from another module we used to use that required it. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's, it's doing nothing. But if you look at the screenshot I sent you, like it, it's the reason why my configure game settings window there is not themed in the foundry 2's dark styling. It's instead looks like what it looks like. So if you turn that off, it'll just fix my UI when I'm in the game settings. Cause I, I just, right. it's oh. done. Yep, that's, that's all I was going to ask for. I just didn't want to interrupt the okay. session for it. Hey, man, amazing job GMing this. Like, Appreciate it. Absolutely just killing it. Like, you're doing such a great job. And, oh, my God, it's just been so fun. We're in what? Say, into session three with no combat? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it's not <clears throat> stopping the fun whatsoever. Like, right. It, I mean, like, uh, you know, I mentioned it. I mentioned it in the session, but I feel like um, uh, when the game does it right, you can have like non-combat mechanics that feel like there's cool story, and you're still engaging with the mechanics of the game. Yeah. Like that whole like day of work or whatever. I was like, I was really into it because yeah. we're still getting to engage in the mechanics. We're still getting to roll checks and roll dice, which you want to do when you're playing. It doesn't have to be combat rolling dice. It can be. I mean, hell, I right. thought it was free. I, I was having a blast describing how I was like designing and stabilizing magic on that magic shield. That was I. I love it. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, they, they've they've really written it very well so far. It seems so. like a really good module. I um, somebody did what I consider a a, a rude thing that you don't do on the Foundry PF2E system Discord, where they mention something that's obviously not a real spoiler, but it's like enough, it's it's something I would spoiler tag before I ever said anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and was, which was, they said something about this module has like meta plot changes related to the dwarves or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, that means nothing to me whatsoever, but I was like, no, but I'm like, I didn't, I didn't want to know that fuckface. I didn't want to know that like the, the the story of like Galarian dwarves might change as part of this adventure. Um, yeah, but I'm I mean, I haven't read the other books yet, but that that seems to be true. It's just, it's really cool, man. I mean, we all love dwarves, you know. Yeah. Ooh, man. Well, everybody's having fun, man. I'm Dude. looking forward to Kingmaker again tomorrow. So I'm excited to put this war priest into like just full blown action. Like, yeah, I'm having, I'm, I'm having a great time. I had a great time tonight. I was actually like really useful in a lot of cool skills with survival and uh, whatnots. Um, and I got that, I got that uh, cleric level one privilege where you're really good at perception, even though you're not. You're only trained <laughs> in it because you got a bunch of. You go outside, Sam. Come on, um, go outside. 
but yeah, all right, man, I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you go so you can sleep, and uh, thanks for an awesome session, I'll uh, see you tomorrow, we'll make some kings. Well, man, later. Later.